Uh, I've got a couple of things written down, but with these glasses, I can see them with the others, I can't, you know. Kevin, you want me to play that music? Oh, yeah, it's good. I don't know if you can, yeah, it's really good, yeah. It's a great film. Just waiting for the guys to come on, Kev. We're on live, we're just waiting. Come on, get joined on the app. They're all eating the Easter eggs, I think, Brian. (laughs) Yeah, that's what it'll probably be. Yeah. (laughs) Who's the first one on? Come on, let's see. Two on. Can you hear me, guys? Let us know. Do you still go to KFC, Brian? Oh, Max is earlier. Still all white David, one of the brilliant lads. Can't wait to come and see you, mate. I I was in jail with a lot of lads uh, from up there. The joke, I didn't miss. Yeah, no problem, Maximus. Dalton Betts, yep. All right, mate. You can see all I hope you're not eating too many eggs, Maximus. <laughs> Wayne Press, is that present? Andrew Williams, even gents, he's saying, oh, evening, mate. Boom. <laughs> yeah, brilliant, mate. Leo Lucius, L I C U R S I. I'm good, mate. Very good. No tr- tax me. <laughs> no eggs. How are you doing? Just a few. It took 19. Yeah, I got a few on there. Got a few on first. Yeah. Yeah, we're fine, Molly. Thank you, mate. Is that Ian Mullet Miller? Well, we've got Arcane Ian, Paul, Bree. Brilliant, mate. Bit of background, background music. Music, yeah, you know. Yeah. Once one time, anyway. Yeah, my sister, yeah, yeah. My sister Molly wants us to play that few. Yeah. yeah, you know when it goes yeah. into the jolly part. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that's gone for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just say hello to Monkey and Maureen while we're on. Yeah, and the, and the dog. Got the same dog as us, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Another man I was talking to today, but I just on uh, Messenger a little bit in depth. We'll go and see him. Yeah, yeah, we'll oh, to, tell uh, me what I was asking about. It, yeah. Told him how much he appreciated what he's done. And yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Six yeah. times well, yeah, yeah, Mr. Universe, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Hiya, Eddie, mate. We love you a bit. Tim. Can't wait to come and see you. Yeah, told him how much you changed. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. Last, yeah. All them old yeah. days are gone now, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just yeah. kids then and stupid and yeah. grown up now. And we've got just some what help people now. Yeah, yeah we've got some yeah. brilliant. Can you oh. all please share onto Facebook or any other platform? That's the boss talking, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I've mentioned mm-hmm. to him as well on the uh, messenger that <coughs> Brian and I agreed that uh, he'd have played a better part attack, than Arnold, yeah. you know. Oh, the bunny, sorry. Room the bunnies when it's attacked me. Oh, that's his only tax me. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Harkins. Uh, thank you very much, mate. Till some of you, Thumb, mate. You're right, son. I think there might be a Thomas couple Harkin, of... you a good lad. Um, my friends oh. watching Trish James uh, and Andrew. Come on, get, get down there. Come on. Maureen Mike. I think we're on a little bit early, that's all. We'll just, but we'll just wait a little bit, guys. And Mick Brannigan, if you're watching, I've got a good story about him 33. tonight. Come on, keep getting on. Right. right. You ready to go? Yep. Right. Welcome to Brian Cockrell Tax Lad Show. We've got the amazing Kev Kilty back by popular demand. I think he's just took over <laughs> my show. I think more people are giving, asking questions about Kevin than me. Someone said he's entitled to be the knowledge of Teesside. But he's here. Kevin, welcome yeah, back. Yeah, welcome mate. back. Right, thanks. We yeah. might get a call by the police again. I don't know. But we might get a visit. Yeah, we hope yeah. so. We've been that good last show. Yeah, guys. Happy Easter to everyone. Yeah, happy Easter. Yeah. What are we going to talk about? Well, sure, sure. Uh, what I was going to talk about, I know I've mentioned all that, but I was going to uh, talk a story through door stories. Yeah. Not necessarily about any fighting or things like that. There's not much of that in it. Yeah. But some really good stories uh, about when I started working at Macmillan's and yeah. some of the people who I uh, got to know there and worked for, some of the door lads who worked for us. And there's a couple of good, really funny stories, but you've got to listen to the end of them for him. But I, I said to Terry Dicko last night, I was going to mention yeah. a, a, a Wait, little, Terry, did you? Yeah, Terry, Marty. A, a little bit about uh, a, a story which he, he, he won't remember, Terry. But anyway, going back a lot of years ago when we were at Winnie Bank, oh, where the church is at the moment, Sainsbury's. And years ago, then I was like a, a clean cut skinhead, not a thug, clean cut yeah. skinhead. Uh, 
But yeah, I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's smart that yeah, I, I yeah. could afford to be. But yeah. then is you could, well, you couldn't, I was that little, you couldn't get uh, the proper check share, so yeah. the Levi Steer Press, or certainly the Airwear Boots. What were you calling them shirts? Them. Um, uh, I don't know what they're called. You know this shirt. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the, the yeah. Ben Sherman. Ben Sherman. Yeah. Yeah. That was a Ben Sherman. That's the one, yeah. And, and the Czech shirts, yeah, and Jack. Yeah. But when the, the steer press came out, and the, I remember there were two tone ones. Is that the one you're on about? Two yeah. tone, yeah. And the airwear boots, yeah. and the Wranglers and Levi's. Yeah. Anyone in ju- uh, senior school, unless you're a big lad, you couldn't get them to fit you. Yeah. Anyway, one day I'm going over the fairground on my own. Didn't have money for the rides like no one did. No. Loved the smell of the hot dogs and yeah. the onions and the chips and burgers, Wessler's burgers. You can still get them. In the oh, they're the down. best burgers. They were there. Yeah. We were just talking about that, me and my wife. <laughs> they were um, Wimpy's. Yeah. Like a rubber type yeah, burger. They're, they're the best yeah. burgers in history. Yeah. yeah. And the smell of the fairground, you know, and something else I remember about the fairground, I'm sure everyone does. Was the great music that used to be yeah. on, yeah. you know, yeah, and the waltzes was, and that, waltzes, yeah. crows fair. Anyway, I was over there this one day, I think it might have been 1970, 69, and then and out. And there's this lad going on what they call the Noah's Ark, which goes round oh, mega really sick. dangerously fast. Anyway, there's this lad, small lad, my size, probably jumping on and off, and looks at me going 90 mile an hour on, off, on, off. And I looked and I thought. He's got airwear on him, this lad. Proper airwear boots. And I thought, he must only be a size three or four like me. You can't get him unless it's size six. And I looked and Randall's on. He must have 24, 26 waist. You can't get them to the 30 waist. Looking the lad dead cocky and what have you. And anyway, Flash Alley looked of a, he'd have a go and what have you. And I was quite impressed by his activities on there. I only told him last week in the text that lad was Terry Dicko. Right. <laughs> um, that sounds like he's all popping on and off the everything. The lad there was Terry Dicko. So my guy today, bless him. And just uh, to mention him. He, just bring my Martin uh, Turner and that was a good day today. Yeah. I remember and I got red red and that. And big John Pickard on me and yeah. the great lads. I'd like to say thank uh, all the support we've had in that last week from everybody. Big Joe Egan, just speaking to him today. Absolutely marvellous man. Come to see us soon when the lockdown's over. Yeah. Rob Holloway has been there. Yeah, David Ashton, my brother, Joey. There's loads and loads of guys out there, but I'd just like to thank everyone here. My wife would as well. Uh, yeah, go back on the yeah, back on to it. So I'll go straight on to the the door stories. I've got a bit of a sore throat, so you'll have to bear with me. Uh, I finished work at Bentley's in I think 1988. I stayed at work for a while. I'd went through a, a, a little bit of depression, to be honest with you, down and out. I'll tell you the story about that later on, because it's quite a story, in it? Uh, you know, I was involved with a girl who uh, I was supposed to get married to, and I didn't get married, and yeah. it done me head in, I should have done, and she was a really good good yeah. girl, you know. Yeah. Not that looks at everything, but she was stunning looking. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, I'd got on with uh, Melanie, you know. Yeah. And Melanie was really smart at the time as well, you yeah. know. Uh, anyway, we just doing normal things, nothing in particular, moved yeah. back down money banks. I weren't doing anything, it was nothing crime-wise, no, I think maybe it's the odd time there was aluminium baseball patterns. <laughs> yeah, because the wooden ones break uh, on after so long. Yeah, not, not that I know about it. <laughs> and, and, the, uh, and the petal bomb and the ladder in the water, like yeah. a few other things. But these were bad people, and to be honest yeah. with you, we all feel the fear, but you feel the fear and run and hide, or you feel the fear and have a fear to protect the only people there, the only people. So anyway, I was uh, in my house down when he banks one day. The lads down there loved little Richard when Richie was a little kid, you know. Richard Rose was always out there. Yeah, he was out and hammering about. <laughs> and uh, he, they didn't know he was going to grow up to be world champion. Mm, not <laughs> but yeah. he used to say, do you want to slide the bump out where you're rich? And yeah. I remember one afternoon, uh, I was just uh, sat in the house and Kev Scott pulls up. Good night, Kev. I think it had been about 1992. Pulls up, Kev. He never comes on, Kev, you know. I want to see you, there's something uh, I want you to do. What? Do you fancy your way? Job back on the door, I said, I said, I don't know how old I was at the time. I might have been 35, somewhere. Like as well, didn't you? Yeah. And I, I said, not, not particularly really. I said, where's that? He said, uh, Tall Trees, Macmillan's, which was, along with the Mal, the best nightclubs in the UK at the time. 
you know, and, uh, owned by the same people, Jab- by the same Jab- people Javid, yeah. yeah, nice man. And Javid, I'd worked for Javid uh, many years before for Jimmy me Dave, too. You know the good kid who worked on that. Yeah, and uh, Javid lent me a lot, actually, quite a lot. You know, yeah. uh, some of his crap was really good. I'll go into it in a minute. Yeah. And I can so, tell you a story about that, but I'll let you. Please. So anyway, he goes on. Uh, you know, I said, well, I thought uh, Gina and Marty work in there. He said, no, I don't know what they packed in or whatever the reason was. And I thought, well, I... You made contact the other day to say hello. Hello back, mate. I'll well, hope to see you soon, mate. And, uh, yeah, keep up the trade. Yeah, he's a great bloke. He's another one who could have been in the film, couldn't he? He's yeah. like, damn, and that yeah, man. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant physique. Top Bram. Bram yeah. really loves him. He think, looks up to him. Yeah, he looks up to him. Really, really Ma- good, Marty good, good man. Yeah, he's yeah, a good man. Yeah, I like, yeah. like Marty a lot. Yeah, like and man. the thing is, when you've got these people who are... You know, people who were tough lads, being very tough lads in the time. I've never ever liked them through them being tough. No, just I, the I, you would be my friend if you were the softest person in the world, same as other people would be. So it's not yeah. about that. Yeah. And anyway, I said, What's happened with the lads up there? Because I don't really want to get a bad name step on the toes. No, it's all right. Yeah. So I went up and seen them. I was talking to Alan Kenny Gregory, decided that I'd, I'd work there. And I knew Javid would let you wear what you want as long as you yeah. were smart. You know, not jeans that, but smart, yeah. especially the Ed Dorman, you know. So I, I, I looked around a few lads to get on the door and I thought, and I'm play a few. I employed one young lad at the time who wasn't even uh, worked on the door, John met little John. Mick Brannigan, do you know Mick Brannigan, Ginger Mick from Spain? Yeah, yeah, really yeah nice lad, lad, lad funny lad. Good, good, good lad, lad, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good quite lad. a Mark Johnson, now he's in Yeah, yeah, good lad. And Mick, Mark the bailiff from... I've met yeah. Mark. He worked with him as well. Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mick's a great, a great lad. A very good lad. Yeah. Uh, Steve Galloway, another good lad, came on the door. Alex Johnson. Yeah. Uh, Ali was at the mall at the time. Yeah, he was at Peter yeah. McGee come work with us. Very good door lad. Yeah, Probably the, lad. I think Peter was the youngest lad to ever work at the Bongo. He was still sissy. I'll just try and get that pin. He used to try and pinch for a seat. You tell you, Peter, mate. Yeah, what's he taking? What's he doing? <laughs> he was 18-year-old when he worked on the door, you know, yeah, but uh, nice kid, had a bongo, yeah. and he was a professional footballer as well. Yeah. Played against Roy Keane and stuff like that. Yeah. So anyway, I got a couple of good lads on the door there, and I got a big lad called Jeff Ayers, who was probably a tough lad, but more of a greeter. Mm. Uh, Steve Ord, Mick Thompson, so some really good lads on the door there. Started working off there. A little bit at GFS few nights, top class people coming in and that, you know. And uh, anyway, I remember as we were getting into it, I really enjoyed it. And Jabba took us down his Rolls Royce to Birmingham, many C Centre. Yeah, the little club there, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did it. and uh, well, he had the nightclub of the year as well, the Maestro. Bradford, 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 start to really enjoy working on the door yeah. it was like yeah. a night out even though i didn't drink yeah you're right it, it was a class place she had like girls bar where i would be and the other lads would be on the other door but i'd float about and i was in charge of them you had a good fun on there didn't you everyone was training yeah you? everyone had the same type of yeah. goal setting it was good fun wasn't it and i remember obviously the people who used to go in there as regulars they'd probably not take to new door lads if they were well in the yeah. other door lads yeah, right. i remember one lad coming up me at the time really nice lad he knew me from a long time ago, but I'd changed and he didn't know me. Yeah. Uh, but I knew his face. There was a lad called Darren Hall from Yarm, do you know him? I know Darren, yeah, big Darren from yeah. the park end, and he knew him very well. And, and Darren, at the end of the night, he was people ready to go, and we were just politely saying, are you ready to go? Hell's back. Sometimes I'd stop back and have a drink, it was a class bar. Uh, and he said, uh, no, I'm being invited here, you know. And I weren't being funny, we were polite, we were meant to be polite, you yeah. know. I said, sorry, I said, his guests are only made. He said, uh, I'm guest, I've been invited as a guest. I said, oh, bye. He said, oh, Kevin Kilty. <laughs> I said, oh, OK, then. I said, I'll buy you a drink then. He said, oh, geez, what's your name? I said, Kevin Kilty. <laughs> well, I went there with little Teddy Dittle once. Quick story. And uh, we goes, um, goes to Gwyn, and there was a big dorm and he's passed away now. Big, about 20 stone, you remember him? He's... Uh, was that Jimmy. the one who was on the Jimmy Catlow? Yeah, yeah, Jimmy Catlow. That's the one who was trying to name him last yeah, week. Yes, he was, he was on the anyway. Jimmy, was, dark hair, that yeah, big, big, big yeah, lad. Yeah, yeah. Big, like, nice lad, wasn't he? Jimmy Rob Tanifi, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Mm. So he came on, he was trying to stop Teddy going in. Because Teddy had an incident at the pub that the barmaid was on. She said, oh, he, he threatened me the other week or something. So that was absolute rubbish. Mm. Uh, some lad who was with Teddy threatened her. And Teddy went, well, now don't me. 
He said, I, I, I was just with a laugh. So they said, oh, you can't come in. So I said to Javid and Mia, I said, are we all right again? I think, um, I think Mickey Funny didn't do this. So we went to get in. He went, oh, you, you, you can't come in. I said, I'm the, I'm the boss. So I had all the shouts. I said, listen, you're doing a lot of shouting. Mm -hmm. Let's go in on the back and see if you can walk the walk. So you don't talk the talk to all the walk. Oh, you bully me now? I went, well, wait a minute. I'm trying to bully you. are 17, 18 stone, six foot two. Yeah. You're bullying Terry. So I'm, I'm going to bully you then. And, he, he, and two days later, they're not attacking Dad. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I didn't admit that, I hit him that night. So what happened? Dad had probably got a jail. It just yeah. shows you, isn't it? So I, 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 asked, I asked the owners. I said, they're the owners. They asked to say that I can come in. I can come any time mm -hmm. I want. Because I dealt with the ball yeah, when I yeah. was working at Kenny Gregory's, so I'll yeah. tell you that. And he was just being horrible, full, mm. full of steroids and horrible. But we passed away and obviously we wouldn't call the man, we just said, Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I knew him a little, a little bit, Jimmy. Yeah, I think yeah. prior to that, he had some stomach problems, cancer, and that, you yeah, know, yeah. and that obviously brought it on. Yeah. But anyway, I started working there, met some really good people, learned to see who the VIPs were, who was allowed in for nothing, and who wasn't, you know. Uh, the drugs were probably big at, at the time then, but to be honest with you, I can say with my hand on heart, and uh, and Javid knew this, not once was I ever involved in selling any drugs on that door. There was probably... The alleged there I was. This was probably all my stuff. <laughs> I'm not that, being horrible, um, but to show the truth, I did, I had the whole... Well, the whole actually, place, a little, everywhere was boxed off. There's a little time. story about that. Actually. I caught one lad in there selling drugs. It, it was very low profile in a way. It was a, the best club around. Everyone wanted to be there. Taxis from everywhere. Everyone was on gear though. All the other people went they, wrong. They probably drugs. were, but in I, I think them days it was probably ecstasy. Wasn't Just it? ecstasy, you know. But that's what it was. It was a rave club. Right? And uh, I might be using but that. later on, yeah, when it would become uh, club M, that's that, when that got. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But these days, obviously, people are coming in that might bring people taking the coke, the whatever. Yeah. Mainly, mainly that the people were it. just taking ecstasy and they were just. Yeah. I mean, I, we had the first club. But it was, it was a lot of people. We, we, we went to the first club to me and it was a film. Yeah. In oh, the North yeah, East. Yeah, I used yeah. to work at the door there with, um, what do you call them, uh, Norman, Norman Rushby and um, Norman, Steve, yeah. Steve Brad, lovely lad, NBA champion boxer. And I was a young kid, 21, 22, weren't I, though? And then. Um, then we were, we got the Eclipse with little Don LaRoche. We, I think Don, we just talked about yeah, seeing him in there. Yeah, All these away, we have to yeah. see him. He's lovely lads over there. And we used to go in there when the fest opened, that they had 30 people. And so I got everyone from everywhere. Got very 3,000 yeah. people. And you used to come to see us and pop in. Yeah, everyone come. Busy, didn't and there was hardly any trouble whatsoever in there. The odd, I couldn't, I couldn't even mention five fights. Mm. It was two, 3,000 people in there, 500 in the queue. Not a fight next door. There were two of them. They're having over a game of dominoes and stabbed each other. Yeah, it just shows yeah. isn't it. So like, then people were all taking the evil. Like, not saying it's a good thing. Yeah. But that was just what happened, didn't it? In days, but yeah. what, what a class uh, location overlooking the sea, isn't it? You know, and uh, yeah, marvelous. And, and good to get that many people in a small yeah. town like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas Matt Millens was in uh, Big Land, and prior to Javid owning it, uh, Kevin Amer, the Amers, Charlie Amer owned it. Prior to Charlie Amer on it, one of my very best old friends, he's 90 now, great man, uh, Kenny Shannon, he owned it. He actually yeah. built it from when it was a colonel's house and extended right, it. Right. Uh, so anyway, we got to know all the VIPs and, you know, people coming in. There wasn't yeah. great lots of trouble for the ones we saw it out diplomatically. You know, we had a big area from the door to the end of the car park. Yeah. Uh, so we had some great nights there, and the people who worked with us at the time, as well as the door staff, was uh, Lal Cowendale. Uh, right. He's on Facebook now, Premier Lal, little in, in Indian bloke. Yeah, he was that good, Lal. He always used to say it to me, and he's he very pleasant. Yeah. He said, Kevin, Kevin, you're the best door lad I've had. And yeah. I said, What you're after, Lal? He said, Just seriously, and he was immaculate, only yeah. a little bloke. He said, he used to say this about himself, Lal, if you look, and you will yeah. watch it later. Yeah. He said, do you think I'm quite a, a good-looking chap, aren't I, Kevin? Do you think so? <laughs> he said, of course you are, Lal, you're great. He could have worked at the Savoy, he was that good. Yeah, well, uh, the gift of the guy. But he was yeah, just yeah. great organisation. Yeah, Kenny Gregory, oh, great person. I went very down, good downtown with Kenny. With Kenny. Was yeah. safe, remember Sid, he used to wear the door. Yeah, yeah, you were downtown. Yeah. Didn't he you was a good man today. And uh, obviously, an, another bloke who was on the door with us, but I always classed him as my boss, 
because he was part of Jared's family. Yeah. <laughs> and it was Dennis who was married to Betty, Betty Bury, if she's watching now. And she was a very great lady. All the doll lads respected her. Right. She took the money in the right. nightclub yeah. side. Yeah. Proper lady. She could have been in Dallas or anywhere. Yeah. And the daughter Donna, in fact, most of the staff there. But her husband, Dennis, God bless who's not with us now, he passed away. Right. Uh, he learned me a lot. He was a really good bloke, good company. And uh, he's, uh, his son used to be a bodyguard for uh, Gary Newman. You know, oh, yeah. Cars. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll talk all the guys last year. And at the end of every night, as I say, we'd, uh, on a Saturday especially, we'd uh, have a drink. Uh, one little tale I'm going to tell you, and uh, I couldn't at the time because it had dropped uh, the lads in it. They used to do a great Sunday dinner at the time, well known in the restaurant, uh, top class, and they'd done them to order. And anyway, on the night, we would be able to go and get our meal and give you some beef and rice and what have you. And John met and Dave McGill one night after the end of the night, we'd had a, a little bit of a drink. It was a summer's morning, it was daylight coming. Yeah. John met said, uh, Kev, can can Dave go and get a bit of beef out of the kitchen? I said, no, not really, no. He said, ah, we just a bit. I said, I'll get in the bother, no. I would never take anything, never steal off a job, nothing. But I said, if there is a little bit of beef, go and get it. Anyway, all of a sudden, Dave, and he used to hide inside and drink Newcastle Brown Ale without its known, but I clicked on. And Dave's walking out, and he's a good lad as well. And all of a sudden, he said, do you want to get in the car first, Kevin? He's holding his arm at that. I thought, what the fuck's up with him? I said, John, what's up with him? He said, oh, I think he's he got a punch early on. He said, I said, gets in the car and a full one. <laughs> a beef drops out on the, the floor. You've been feet. <laughs> um, and, yeah. you know, that was one of the other little stories. Uh, and going back to it as well, there's a, another story of it. I, I hope he doesn't mind me telling this story because uh, the lad who is he's on Facebook now and he's a, a good lad. And... At the time, he was coming in and he was he was from the outer parts of Winniebanks. And there was a lad called Kappa. Do you know him? Kappa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kappa. Yeah. Uh, well, Kappa, yeah, go on, Mammy mentioned. If you do, I'm sorry, I don't think he, he was one of them who got sent away for the sure. murder of Speedy. Yeah, yeah. Even though he wasn't the one who pulled the trigger. Yeah. And one week he was in there and uh, Kenny Gregory came in and said, Kappa's dealing drugs on the stage there. And he used to let him in as a guest. I said, Are you joking? No, they'd come in. And they said to him, Have you got any drugs on you? No, no, not at all, Kev. Any drugs on you at all? He wasn't a bad lad, he was a good lad, actually. Yeah. No, no, not at all. And anyway, Kenny went out. I said, Kenny, go and get Steve Galloway to get the other lad off the stage. He went out the office. I said, If you've got any drugs on you now, tell me, because the cop is going to come and you're going to get arrested. You know, I said, I don't know you want your arrested, but if you're selling the gear. Anyway, he said, no, I haven't. I went to check in his pocket and he had, God knows how many there. You know, so we barred him out of the place. A lot of people had taxed him, as you know, you know. <laughs> when you, were running, you, know you would have, you know. I used to send a certain person in, a girl. Because George... Not far for me, and I'd say, go in there and see what's about. So you could tell they were dogs yeah. and all these things. If they come back different colours, I think some bastards in <laughs> And I'd do <laughs> and have them hunted out. You would have let them away, but we, yeah. we, we were nice guys, so we I was a nice guy, I was just keeping the drugs off the street. <laughs> <man away. laughs> I said, Have you got any drugs? He said, No, I said, You want some? <laughs> anyway, he was barred out, uh, and he, he we didn't want him back in. He couldn't, you know what I mean? He'd abused it. He was on the stage yeah. selling them for drugs. Yeah. And as you know, at the back of it, you used to have yeah. a barbecue area where if you wanted to, you could probably sneak on the back. And sometimes yeah. there was 2,000 people in there on the night. Oh. Yeah. And anyway, Kenny come to me again, Kenny Gregory. Kevin, what, Ken? You won't believe it. He said, there's someone sat on the stage selling ecstasy as if the fucking sweets. I said, who is it? He said, I have a guest. said, it's not Capper, is it? <laughs> He said it is. So anyway, I'd, I'd lost my temper, and I'd still apologise to you now, but I couldn't help it. I went in the door, I'd had him, and I slapped him and literally locked him. Right. You had over. So I yeah. apologise for that, Kappa. He probably filled me in now because he's training. He's in, <laughs> he's in probably filled me in about you. <laughs> he's, he's in good shape. Yeah. But the respect we had off people, it wasn't necessarily because no. we were tough door lads, because we were... Pleasant door lads. Yeah. We had police coming in there. You had Bernie Slaven coming there. 
Gary Palace to come in there. I remember Brian one Cockrell. Brian Cockrell, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I'll tell you how Brian came in when I was working there. Uh, uh, I, I, even though Brian was a great friend, I spent not in the middle of time, the only time at the weekends with him, but I knew literally everywhere was wary of him coming in. And his mate Flea come up one night on the Friday. He said, all right, Kev, how are you doing? I said, are you coming in? He said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not coming in. He said, uh, Brian wants to know, is he all right to come in tomorrow night? I thought, oh, there won't be any trouble, will there? There won't be any trouble. You might not remember this. Yeah, I do. Uh, and anyway, Brian come in, you know, guesting. He was dressed in a pair of tailor-made uh, trousers and a white shirt, you know, he looked. He looked at the back, looked really big and thingy. And anyway, he was in about, I don't know how long, quarter an hour, and he come out and I heard this clatter from the other door and the door nearly come up the hinges and Bryce says to me, if he's cheating me again, I'm going to fucking give him it. And it was John Met being given a little bit of a, oh, I don't know what it was yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, Brian went and got him. <laughs> he didn't have any problems, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the doors need to come off. But they, well, they actually but, did. Yeah, Flea was saying. They did. <laughs> they just told them, took the doors off the hinges. Didn't they? Well, they, they did actually. Yeah. But the lad who pinched the beef, Dave. Right. He was a joiner. Oh, right. So right. he's paid back for the beef. <laughs> so, so put there the you are, mate. So I went after that beef now. <laughs> yeah. And anyway, this other night, uh, sorry about my voice, by the way. This other night, we were in there. And obviously, you had to be dressed smart. Yeah. A summer's night stood on the Hells Bar, can see 300 metres up the road. Minibus pulls in, and these lads get out. I'm not kidding you, some of them your size, yeah, which you can't believe. And Mick Thompson says, We've got trouble here. I thought, but they're counting them going, It's about 12 of them jeans on, t shirts, boots. Fucking hell, I said, Love, I'm just going up here. I said, I don't know what's going to happen, but they can't come in. And I walked up with uh, Mick Brannigan. Mick Brannigan. He said, he, he said it was, <laughs> we outnumbered it, you know, Kev. <laughs> I said, I know. We walked up and I said, listen, mate, one of them was a foreign bloke trying to talk. I said, I'm sorry, you cannot come in like that. You can't come in like that, no chance. What? And I thought he was going to have a go. I said, I'm sorry, you can't come in like that. And all of a sudden, this big bloke with a beard came from behind me. Shook me hand. He said, "Oh, we've been invited by Javid. Was Jeff Capes right? Was he had a security firm, didn't he? he had a security yeah. firm, Jeff. And he was with all the world's strongest men. Right, that's how oh. there was to be. They, they okay. come uh, uh, to visit us, and I was talking really? to Jeff. Yeah. Uh, obviously, he know Richard now. Richard didn't well yeah. talked yeah. to Jeff a while back. Uh, and he was England, well, he was well, well strong as man, yeah. Well, he, he, he was a policeman at first, wasn't policeman, he? yeah. And then he, he apparently he's in the budgies now, he looks after the, the budgies, budgies. Yeah, he's uh, but he, he broke the record with the great what do you call him, John Paul Sigmundson, yeah. He was mm. awesome and all, yeah, he? He was, yeah. And he was a great bloke, Jeff. Talked to him, and that he was suffering from a bit of sweats at the time, yeah, over yeah. that. And he was on the door well, talking tell you to me. Tell me a funny story, you might know this, Richard will probably know it. There's a thing you people used to say when you lift heavy weights, it slows you down, but it doesn't. What happens when you get older? Well, you start to lose and the fast twitch fibre muscle. So the only way to keep that is to train really heavy. Now, Jeff Capes trained heavy. He used to say, if you train heavy, you, you couldn't punch as fast, but it's wrong. He'll tell you yourself it's, it's the fast yeah. twitch fibres you train when you train heavy. Mm. All these, his daughter and that were running, and Richard and that all used big heavy weights, so yeah, the legs can make them faster. Mm. The old thing he was even Tyson used to think that years ago. I know he, mm. he, he, he trained the weights in the end, yeah, yeah. But uh, Jeff Caves, so 26 stone, six, oh, six easy, like that. yeah, yeah. Brendan Foster had a race with I was him. just going to mention that and uh, over 200 meters, yes, yeah, something, something short sprint, whatever it was. And he said, I could beat you, he went, never mind, no chance. And Jeff Caves beat him, didn't he? Yeah, with and, a, with a, 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 a allegedly, Brendan, if you're watching, because Brendan knows me and Richard very yeah, well, I've got yeah, Brendan, he was, yeah. Just the message me, Brendan Foster, the other week about how well Richard yeah. done on Absolutely brilliant sport. Player, wasn't he? Yeah. Great bloke. Yeah. What he's done with the Great North oh, Run absolutely and marvelous. the City Games, him and Richard bring it to stop. Yeah. 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 Really off to him. Yeah. Well, Brendan will tell you if it's true as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Big Jeff beat him, yeah. Big, and Big Jeff beat him. So uh, that story, Peter wouldn't believe, but if you want to check, check it. Yeah. It's there. And it does the speed, you get more speed even when you train on weight, every weight to yeah. get that past the hands. Of course it does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another quick story going off the door work though, but it's funny. Uh, 
the uh, the Diamond League games that were coming to Gateshead yeah. last year. It's mad to stay in that. Massive. This is one of the world's best races, all the Emptons yeah. there. And Gateshead got a, a contract for it. And Brendan Foster asked Richard to go up because he's in charge of the city games. Right. They'll promote all the television cameras were there. I got my nose in a little bit, you know, not too much, but yeah. I got my nose in. And anyway, the, Richard was star of the show invitation at the promotion, invited by Brendan Foster. Brendan Foster, obviously, well gone and retired now. Yeah. And all these young athletes came up who uh, were from other clubs. Uh, I think they were from Blade and other ones. But school kids, about 10 year old, 11. Yeah. And we were in the changing room and all of a sudden Richard walks in with his Great Britain stuff on. And the coach there says, right, children, we have a very special guest here. Richard stood there and he said, hands up, people who know who this man is. Yeah. And they put the hands up and they're trying to say, so I'm not going to ask everyone. I'm going to ask everyone once said, This is a very famous man here. And he said to one lad, you know who this man is? Yeah, he said, who is this man? He said, I know who he is. It's Brendan Foster. <laughs> <laughs> what did Richard say? Well, I, I, <laughs> Don't stop me. Well, I went Brendan later on. I said, hey, Brendan. I said, Richard's just had a bloody great compliment there, you know. He said, what was that? I said, they asked him to know who he was, and I said, it was you, Brendan Foster. <laughs> but Brendan was a great... Because he was known that much for being a runner there. That's what it'll yeah, probably yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's like saying, oh, the best, this fight is the best fight, and if it was... Probably, yeah. probably say it was Mike Tyson, wasn't it? So... And another time, a story that ended up in the court case, actually nothing to do with Macmillan's, but ended up in the court case. Another group of lads came one night, and uh, two of them looked real, real handfuls. Other ones smart, well to do, you know. And one of them was this, we didn't know at the time, really big, six foot seven black lad, probably 27 stone. Not in the shape that you yeah, were, yeah. but he was a very strong, yeah, big yeah. lad. And it was John Daniel, the, uh, he was an American yeah. lad, but London lad cancer, yeah. allegedly. He, he, if you have a look at the career's funeral, he I've was the him, yeah. black yeah. lad who yeah. was there. Uh, and he was a really nice lad, we weren't going to let him in at first. Didn't he have your own security in that? Yeah, he yeah, did, yeah. Did. yeah. 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 He, he was security for these lads right, there. Right. And what these lads were doing, they had the Ifield Hotel and a few other top-class places. And for a few weeks, they had this top-class Italian furniture, best you've ever seen in the world, yeah. on display, and everyone was going and looking at it, and it was a £200 deposit, and then you bought it, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Cut long story short, yes. they were there a few weeks, made millions on deposits. The furniture never, ever, ever came. Oh, there right. is. Uh, like and <laughs> they ended up at court for it later on, right. with these, I don't know, with the Adams as well, but yeah. one of them was in with him, and Big John was there, and... Uh, yeah. Anyway, for a laugh, I was sitting in the airport one day because he stayed at the hotel and he was fucking massive. Really big black book. And uh, I said, I'll take you to the airport. I said, Do you mind, John, if I uh, stop off at my brother's house in Winniebanks? It was out yeah. Raymond. Yeah. Anyone who knows Ray. Yeah. <laughs> he's dead feeble. He's yeah. not with us now, but he's very scared of anything to say the least, my older brother. Yeah. So I comes to the door. I said, Can you knock on the door? He's door, John. And says, Ray Killian, I want to wear you. <laughs> and he knocked on the door, Ray Killian, I want to wear you. Boom, he hit the deck, Ray. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, did any of you ever meet Paul Massey? So, I've just seen that you, your, your sister, didn't she? Yeah. So, can yeah. I tell you a little story? I had met him uh, a long time ago, about 1984, at Manchester. I didn't particularly know him, uh, but Paul Massey was a very, very good friend of my brother-in-law, uh, Paul Lyons, Monkey Lyons. And Paul was in prison with, uh, uh, with Paul Matthew was in prison with Monkey for quite a long time. They became very, very, very uh, good friends. Uh, and Monkey was telling some stories about how hard Paul used to train. Even though he wasn't a big, big lad, mm. when he used to get all the protein, took in, go on the pads and that. But he was very, very, well liked in Salford. Yeah, yeah he was. He was well liked. Well, I know, like, so I was in jail with his brother Eddie. Yeah, yeah. I was in with him for um, 95, 96. Yeah, and he yeah. went to uh, 
I went to Paul's funeral. Maureen's a very good friend of his wife as well. She's been up to visit her a few yeah. times. She was best man for y'all, Maureen. Been, been, well, my sister was married uh, in prison. Yeah. She was in prison at the time, but a boyfriend was. Yeah. And the best man, I've got some photos what you can put on your yeah. website about him, yeah. was Paul Massey and oh. uh, Monkey. And that's really? the, the time when I'd said that uh, when she went in, the prison officer said, what are you doing back, Maureen? Your husband's dead. Should I've come to get married? Oh, two monkey lions. Yeah. Monkey lions, what are you bothered marrying him? Oh, he's daft. So he makes me laugh. Why don't you fucking marry Ken Dodd? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was in jail in Durham. Yeah. And uh, he had the same probation officer, Derek, they called him. Mm. It was me. I go, oh, it's bad, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> the probation officer, man. Anyway, we were locked up and he said the best time we had in jail was being with me. Yeah. All that jail, he did 20 odd years, didn't he? And, yeah, so the best year I've ever Brian. Years. And, and, and the other one, uh, the the other person, he one time. Oh yeah, yeah, really, he was very really well respected, made a really lot of money, nice you know. Lad, yeah, and was. very clever. What did he do? Twenty first off. Well, I've been in not a jail his life, oh. but he ended up getting it like twenty records or something, didn't he? In the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Moongy did, but I think Paul got a, a few acquittals in that. And, yeah. Uh, he was a very good friend of Paul Massey's. Yeah, Paul Massey was a very good friend of uh, Paul Ferris. That's right, yeah. And when I was at the funeral, I, uh, uh, next session I'll tell a story about that funeral. Uh, I was stood next to uh, sit out of Coronation Street, you know, the daft one. Yeah. Yeah. But I think you all daft in Coronation Street. <laughs> I don't watch it, but I, was, yeah. I don't either, but I was stood next to him. And when we went to the, uh, to the church, me, Maureen, and Monkey, Parked there in Salford, about 10 people outside, yeah. waiting, waiting. And 10 minutes ago, I said, I don't know whether we've got the right church. So he went, that's someone that's Paul Massey getting married here, yeah? From a distance, he thought it was William Wallace, the cavalry, yeah. the noise, the bugles, and about 30 Scotch pipers come round the corner. I wouldn't like to say how many, probably minimum 20 black Mercedes. And maybe it's 3,000 people. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of them, when he was going in the church, were God worshipping, touching his coffin, touching his coffin. Yeah. And, and well, some, right, yeah. some of them people, they'll do the same to you. Yeah. you know, Man, you the just that makes you probably <laughs> carry my <laughs> coffin. You know, yeah. Uh, hope you don't have to go out. <laughs> 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 you're about at the time. <laughs> So anyway, they were touching his coffin. Yeah, and big Eddie will do it, won't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, most of the people who were touching his coffin and praising him were people, I would say, 70, 80-year-old yeah, in wheelchairs, oh. crying. Yeah. So he did help a lot of people yeah. out, you know. Yeah. So and, sad, wasn't it? Like Robin Hood figure, wasn't he? Yeah, like he was. Like, a lot of people yeah. liked him because he, yeah. he was like, I was here mm. the beginning. I just as soon we found out more people were getting robbed or people were getting I think houses exactly like that exactly like, 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 yeah. yeah just help people you know and uh, get money to help people, people yeah. Yeah. try to solve yeah. problems it was quite sad yeah. actually yeah because yeah. mm. it's no disrespect to anybody but what the old school values if anybody was messing about with old people's windows no, no. we'd go around sort of wrong, wouldn't we we would I mean, and you, we, the police would just drive off wouldn't yeah, the police would no that's what they need a good slap they I mean, they not say this to, to balance it's great, but yeah. sometimes that's the only thing these people knew, isn't it? It's yeah, and, and not about that, going off the story, Monkey, Paul Lyons, my uh, sister's yeah. husband, yeah. he told us a story, because he's not very well now at the moment, Paul, but he's very funny at the time. Yeah. <laughs> he tells us about when him and Charles Bronson, Bronson the prisoner. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, but I've had a few postcards of him. Yeah. But I don't know him, I've never met him. Or what I did a book with him called... You did a book with him, yeah. I'll just show you, I did a book with him, yeah. Called Salty Fitness quite a while ago. I and I hope he gets out. I think then, yeah, I'll get you one. I hope he gets out um, on his parole. We love you, Charlie, and we're all here for you, all the guys, you know. So, yeah, if he's been in long enough, yeah. he's paid a cloud of yeah. rapist in less than him, he's yeah. out. So, Charlie, yeah, we hope he gets out. <coughs> and I reckon he trains really hard and that, you know. And yeah. I, 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 I said, I don't know him. I'd like to get him a couple of. You let three razors to get that beard yeah. off, you'd look a lot better. Probably look 20 years uh, younger, Charlie Boyd. Uh, but yeah, Monkey. He's another nice, he's all liked by everyone, Charlie. He's Very done so much for charities, but people don't know. Yeah. He's given all the charity he's money mm. in that, and he's done so many books and that over the years, but it's all gone to charity. Yeah, yeah and so the, uh, the Monkey was saying about that he was in segregation, which is a cell within, within a cell. Yeah. 
which you can't get out. No. And uh, Charlie was above him. They knew each other very well. Monkey's in solitary. And he uh, gets brought around Sunday afternoon. Apple pie and custard. Yeah. Monkey comes through the door, eating the cell, you know, 24-hour lock-up. Yeah. Charlie Bronson knocking on the ceiling. Monkey, monkey, what's that I can smell? What's that I can smell? Monkey, Charlie, it's the apple pie, custard. What's it like? What's it like? Fucking mint. You should see the chunks of the apple in it. They're bringing you some round, Charlie. It's only five minutes, Charlie. Okay. Half an hour later. Monkey, monkey, I haven't had the apple pie and custard yet. Where is it? They said they were bringing it. Anyway, half an hour later, the doors are going, the landings, the alarms off, everything. Where's my fucking apple pie? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the apple pie? <laughs> Open the doors in. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, if he ever comes to see you, make sure you have yeah. some fucking apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> we will, I'm posted. <laughs> yeah, he's, hey. he's, he's sent us a few drawings over the years and uh, he's written a few books for us, uh, written a sign a few books over the years. So he's nice man. The drawings are excellent, aren't they? Yeah. First class. He always yeah. uses a very thin pen, doesn't Yeah, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, another thing going on. Any door, questions, anyone? The door lads, uh, some good no, stories yeah. come up here. Uh, 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 and one of them was when Tall Trees uh, was getting built into what the Club M was, the Great Club M. Uh, you've seen it, like a Roman front on it, a swimming pool into it, Alexandra Suite, a, a, a brilliant thing done by Javid and his team. And Javid once thanked me and says, you know, you've been very honest on the door, Kevin. We've yeah. had a lot of funds, you know, and blah, blah, blah. So I was at dorm at the time that that still opened, uh, yeah. Alexander Suite. And it was meant for big entertainment, uh, top stars and that. And the first star that was ever on there, <coughs> who I particularly didn't like, was Max Bygraves. Right. You remember Max Bygraves? Yeah, was singer wasn't he and comedian entertainer and, yeah and film star and I, I, I knew there'd be old people there pensioners he wasn't Mark up to you like yeah he wasn't man I didn't I didn't particularly like him no. so it holds a thousand and as you go and you've been having it goes sunken down yeah seats a thousand the kitchen equipment Javid bought was out of this world and there must have been about 100 staff on this day day before says to Kenny I always remember it was on a Friday uh, coming up towards Christmas Kenny, what time do you want me in the door, lads, here tomorrow? Uh, half 12. I said, Max Bagbeer's on it. at one o'clock, Kenny. Half 12 will do. I said, I don't think so, Ken. I said, there's going to be loads of old age pensioners here. Yeah. Yeah. We we are again. Stuff, yeah. So anyway, we decided <coughs> to go at half 12. Me, Mick Brannigan and the rest of the lads, I think Peter McGee was there, John, a few others, Pulls up in the car park, half 12 on the afternoon, it was afternoon show, mainly pensioners. Yeah. 30 quid a ticket, meal included. Even, yeah, I think the dessert was up at Apple Pie. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was actually, because I'll tell you the story. I'll take it there, Charlie, but it's gone now. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Pulled up and John, the security lad, said, fucking hell, Kevin, there's fucking hell on. He said, whatever trouble you've had on these doors, you're not going to have the trouble you've got with these pensioners. <laughs> what then? <laughs> Kenny Gregory's fighting through the crowd. Kevin, Kevin, come over here now. Kenny, I told you we should have been here at 11 o'clock. I didn't know anyone had come and see the staff bugger, Max Bygraves. Right. So it's we must have so yeah. the tickets. Yeah. And I went in yeah. and tried to calm him down. And there's this old woman in the wheelchair. I hope you don't mind me saying Kenny, like, but you laugh. Old woman in the wheelchair, about 80. <laughs> Yo, Kenny, you were the manager. Why can't I sit down there? Get me down there now. 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 <laughs> Smacking Kenny in the mouth. Yeah. The woman's friend was on a Zimmer frame and trying to attack Kenny with a Zimmer frame. <laughs> <laughs> it was chaos, a disaster. Eventually, we got them all sorted out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we, we had the same thing. We finished that. Yeah, so we worked on the door at... Um, Black cat, but it used to be called in Africa. And what you used to do, you used to have a, a night on every night, you'd have somebody on it. And, and he came better, better man, mm. lovely bloke. Wow. And I was massive. On I love him, you know. I had a white chair and I'm stood there. And he went, See that big bastard? I want him, I want him on stage with me. And Bernie McDevitt, all right, Bernie, my mates from Red Cat. Tony Stubbs was there, Tony John, John Black, uh, 
Cookie, all them, all the lads. John uh, from Winky John, not that one, the other yeah, John, from yeah. our friend, yeah, yeah. Green Sound. Anyway, so on that piece of day, if he if he said if it's a, he says it's Wednesday, it's Wednesday. Says so important thing of it. If he said it's fucking Christmas, it's Christmas, good King Wednesday's last one. Now. <laughs> I, and when I went on the stage, where he said, make sure I don't get attacked on you, you know. Anyway, I looked after him there, and he shook me hands and everything. Love yeah. the man. We had loads of guests on there. And it was funny. I was like, no, um, the basic role is all that type of people. Big turns, weren't they? Yeah, the, the four tops, no. the hot chocolate, all them type of people. We four tops, after, no. yeah. We looked after loads of people. Yeah, this is a funny night. There were all these young girls all queued outside, packed. And some lads in that was packed. And John Black's on the door and that, and I stood there. And, and this lad popped his head and he said, Can I get in there, mate? He said, No, we're just waiting for this. Fucking, we're just waiting for someone. He said, We're just waiting for this fucking dickhead called Eddie Kidd. He went, I'm Eddie Kidd. <laughs> <laughs> and John had to leave, mate. I remember John telling us the story. <laughs> yeah, do you remember? Yeah, 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 and anyway, Max Bygraves on. So anyway, they get the show going. And it's the best do they've ever had there, a thousand meals. And they're bringing them out all individually. We are just like, mellowed down chilled out you know yeah. creatures not dormant and then we were just looking after them yeah max bygraves on with all these this that new the hands this hands i didn't like, like him you know he wasn't my cup of tea but he was sat there anyway and the the main course came out people were eating it then all of a sudden the sweet came out uh sorry the start of the main course by the time the sweet come out some people were just getting the starter right and it was a total cock up. Disaster, yeah, yeah. Afterwards, it was great, but a total cock up. Mm. And the same woman at the front with the Zimmer frame <laughs> and the slab of the Kenny, mm. Max Bygraves in the middle of he's singing and it's going down really well, you all thingy. And this woman stands up and says, Max, Max, where's my fucking apple crumble? Where's the apple crumble? Where's my. And he had to stop the show. Yeah. 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 Charlie Robson's Charlie Robson's These stories are all funny, aren't they? You know? it's, it's not all just about fighting on them, though. No. Not good, half stone, you know? We had the Red Bud on, remember them tank of feet? They were on. Oh, yeah. they were great, them. Then. Swaddy Let's Waddy on. We had all them type of people on. With all these, yeah, absolutely brilliant to meet all these people. Yeah, I, I worked a yeah. little bit with Mud just for one night. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah, they were yeah. very good. It was only tiny, wasn't he? Yeah, it was. Yeah, we did him. Um, Leo Sir looked oh, after like him. him. Bob Gildoff looked yeah. after him. I looked after him. Bob Gildoff, yeah. Every year, me and Sean did. Are you like out there, Sean? Good mate, yeah. Sean. We went to the um, the seat, uh, the Stockton Festival, mm -hmm. and the Bobbies were there, and we got the job. John Phil really? was John Phil yeah. was there. We were stood there, all, hey, right, I remember that, all yeah. right and crew coming and everything. It's the first year we've had no trouble on again. Other festivals, yeah, 50,000 people turned up, done it. Was it about 1993, something like that? Yeah, 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 about 1995, six of them. Yeah, John, John Field, Sean, and you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden, uh, there was no trouble. A couple of them, he's made his presence covering a cockerel. There's only a good few bobbies, there's usually loads. Nobody's going to cause trouble with me. Yeah, that was yeah. really good to that one. Yeah, yeah. good. You spent one for three days. So, yeah, we met Leo Say. He was only tiny. Yeah, you know? oh, I liked yeah. him, you know. Good, good singer. There was loads of people we met over the years. And Gina G, with it, yeah. um, my other friend from Sunderland, looked after her. They were only on a bit. Uh, yeah. QFX, we did in the club. They were good when they were there. two grand. Yeah, 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 we used to have seen people them days used to do entertainment. Yeah. Especially at uh, Henry Africa, in Stockton, all the people know who lived there. People come to entertain you, but yeah. it's, it's, it's ruined it now because they don't have comedians, dancers coming on, singers. It was yeah. all every night you yeah. had something on, so it was good. I said just music, yeah. you know, it was just uh, it was good. good. They'd have them on for an hour or so, and then they'd change it to the disco. Yeah, so. they were really good times, you know, yeah. the turns that were on. Yeah, they were. You see, after Max Bygraves, he came off, and it was a winter's afternoon. Yeah. It was tea time dark by then. Yeah. And he, he knew me name, he shouted, so he said, Kevin, he said, uh, on the way down, we got picked up at Darlington the station. First class travel. I said, yes, Max. She said, there was a very weird looking odd odd fella brought us down in Javits Rolls Royce. But pretty fair, you know, he, he was very, very odd. I said, you know who he is? He said, no, but I know he was the bloke who the women were in with a Zimmer frame. <laughs> 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 so 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Would you? He said, "I don't mind him, but would you mind uh, driving me there?" He said, "Because he's never had a bloody shave for a week." This fellow. <laughs> yeah, Kenny goes on again. He had a look over the um, the Bee Gees, didn't he, Kenny? Did yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Nice man, though, and his wife was nice. Well, oh, she's she really away, good. She? Yeah. yeah, Angela. Yeah, yeah. He's got a really good family. So, I'm asking well. how many Sierra Pods listed you are. I had six, I think it was. I taxed two and I bought, no, I taxed three. We were talking to Thingy Pierce, when we took, um, Terry Pierce, car dealer. He went, Oh, you come to mine. I thought you were going to tax three, but I was always all right with the decent one. It was just gobshite. He won't come to my garage and tax it. And I took it off him. Uh, Cuds with the graphite grey one was 15 grand at the time. He had yeah, some they were fast cars. cars yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you know that. I had one of them. Porsche 911s and that. Porsche 911. He went to me, what have you been doing, rubbing banks? Every day you come to the different cars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and he had one that Escort Cosworth, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, out, yeah, the Escort Cosworth. And, uh, and yeah. all sorts of, just everything you think of. Like, had Jeep, Shogun's. He's got his own there with my wife. Could <laughs> <run out>. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and another good story about tall trees, uh, <clears throat> it involves Mick Brannigan. Well, I ended up working with Bob Monkhouse, and Bob Monkhouse came there, and I was... He was funny, wasn't he? You're very good. Yeah. I was literally the one in, uh, who was writing with Bob all the time. Probably one of the best overnight. all around yeah. entertainers, him and, and Bruce Forsyth, probably the best yeah. two ever entertainers on television programs. I was with him, I'll tell you a story about him in a minute, but I was with him for uh, four days, yeah. went to Create On All with him. If anyone ever goes to Create On All, if they're lucky enough to go there, great place. Uh, Bob Monkhouse then stayed in what they call the Leaven Suite. Right. So if you ever go and you book in the Leaven Suite, the great Bob Monkhouse stayed there. Yeah. Uh, 2019, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. good, yeah. I was, I'm not sure yeah, where yeah, it is now. Yeah. And uh, anyway, Mick Brannigan was there, and I'd looked after Bob Monkhouse a couple of weeks before. <clears throat> Mick said, uh, Tom O'Connor's here. Mm. Tom O'Connor. Yeah, I moved from, from uh, Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mind him here. He yeah, funny. I didn't mind him, but it I don't know. Was thinking, was it, yeah. something about his haircut that seemed a bit odd. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said to Mick, Mick, I'll do you a favour. You'll get a reference off him. You look after Tom O'Connor. He said, honestly, I said, yeah. I said yeah. you be with him, Mick. Wherever he goes, you go. I said, but don't lose sight of the dressing room and him. So he goes down, Tom O'Connor, and sent you the... About 10 minutes later, I got a, a, a call on the walkie-talkie of uh, McBranigan. It's Kev there, Kev there. Yes, Mick, Mick, where are you? I just need a stage, Mick. Can you come and see me? No, I can't. Can I come and see you? Uh, you can, Mick, but don't lose sight of the doorway. Nothing will happen, but you need to keep your eye on the doorway where Tom is. Nothing will happen, but yeah, come and see me. So he comes up the side of the stage. He says, uh, I just knocked on the doorway to Tom McConnor. I said, it'd be 10 minutes, Tom. And it, he said, come in. So I opened the door. He said, and he's invited me in for a drink. I said, what do you mean a drink? He said, uh, like a rum and coke. I said, oh, that's okay. Bob Monk, I was to the meat, go in. He said, but he's got no fucking clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> you got no clothes on. <laughs> Tom O'Connor. Yeah. Man, you went in Mick, I think, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, it was just for the drink, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and another time, Mick did a bit of a trick to me. Uh, I think it was Mick. And Stu with me at the time, we were on the old tall trees. Uh, and he said, I've got this spray here, Kev. He said, uh, I said, don't be bringing it. What is it? He said, it's pepper spray. Yeah. I said, Mick, get rid of it. Don't have it on here. He said, I said, it's a load of shit anyway. I said, it's not. I said, it's as good work. as. I said, yeah. it's as good as fucking the mouth spray, you know, pepper spray. Yeah. He said, it isn't. I said, here you go. And I thought he was. I thought he was carrying on. I didn't realise it was pepper spray. Yeah. I said, here, I'll show you how good that is. And I squared it in my mouth. Fucking horrible. <laughs> pepper. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 There was a thing going around. Army lads used to come out then, and they used to come out with that that siesta so you can't see. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Leo's one night, I knew he hit the deck, couldn't breathe. It's legal you, stuff, it's horrible. You can't just, just put it in the army lads for a joke. Army lads, we know, stuff's in them. They dropped it and you pet a bill, yeah. pet a thing. Oh, I couldn't, I don't cry in the face. It was a proper pure stuff song. Yeah. It used to make me hold it in my bag, stuff, and they'd give you the matches that you got to go with them, and they'd have like a 
the matches would have a yeah. big bulbous end, not to light them, and they mm. were like little tablets. And I tell you who got best in Mali. Yeah. Mali made a joint with one of them, somebody, yeah. and it was terrible. <laughs> and the yeah. lab collapsed, but yeah. there were 100% pellets in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're they're horrible. Horrible. going yeah. back to CS spray, yeah. outdoors sometimes it's not yeah. effective even with army and military and police and that, no. uh, because indoors, it can blow yeah, back yeah. in you, but indoors it's lethal, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. they do have a, a spray gel, you know, the SAS and, right. and the SAS have one, yeah. which I've seen out. knock it out completely, yeah. Yeah. I've seen it in action actually yeah. with my brother, uh, I'll be probably to kidnap people, I'm yeah, to right, you'll get them away, not not to the face, yeah. Yeah, get rid of them <laughs> yeah going back to, uh, to the tall tree stories again. Uh, I had the pleasure of one time working with uh, Peter Stringfellow. Oh, yeah, Peter Stringfellow. Yeah. King, King of Clues. Well, he wanted me to go down to there, the club. The Lennox Lewis was going, there was loads of people, mm. and there was like a night where it was all people dressed up as that different people. That could have been the ta- time yeah, I was he, 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 asked, he asked me to go down there to stay where mm. the door was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, you had the what did they call the club again? Was it um, your eyes only in angels? I'm not it? sure what the club was, yeah. um, Peter Stringfield, but yeah, it was down there when at London, yeah. it was uh, McIntyre that was telling me was to go with Dave Courtney, you know, yeah. like, let us go down there, but uh, obviously I never went. But uh, yeah, he, yeah, he was up, and uh, anyway, it was my job to be with him at the time, and that he was very fan boy, and he was camera great on him, someone to take a photograph there and put over, and even though he was king of clubs. Yeah. Uh, in another way, Javed in his own right was because he was nightclub of the year. Yeah, he won, he won. And he came up to see uh, Javed. Um, he had weird hair, didn't he? Yeah, weird hair, yeah, yeah very yeah. strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was known for wearing uh, dodgy looking G strings and stuff yeah, like that. Wasn't he? he was a bit odd, wasn't he? Well, that's 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 why I never went down there. <laughs> on the door to tell you the truth. So, yeah. that's just that's what's happened to Javed. Well, he's just retired now, isn't he? He's <laughs> retired, but I think he's got his hands in a few things. He's got yeah. a lot of property at Dubai. I seen him in the casino a while ago with his. Uh, I've seen, I seen Jimmy oh, D. Don from. He looked well, well Jared. Oh, yeah, we yeah, seen yeah. Jimmy D. around the uh, Tesco. Do you yeah. remember me, yeah. Jimmy? Yeah. He's yeah. Yeah. He can be a cuddle and everything, so I said, bugger the. He, he, he looked Lovely. well, actually. Yeah. Uh, I, I couldn't get a drink from my throat. Yeah, yeah. You, can't, you, on, you can't get a drink in this house, I tell you. you I'll have a coat, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, going back to uh, Javid and uh, Pete. I was respectable, right? Javid, and me, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's really really was very, very good. Yeah, I remember uh, one night I phoned up to the mall and I went, I need some mechanic coat, you know, and I was like, them did. And he went, What do you mean? So I phoned up and Javid said, just send it in the taxi to him. What are you doing with this big, big massive body? Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was, I went in one night with shorts on, and the, the old man went, You can't get in like that. It was probably kept Scotty. Mm. Finally, I said, I'm not coming in. So Jam would come up and he went, Do you want a meal? <laughs> he took me down for a meal. You remember that? He'll remember yeah, when Jam was a tall lad, you know. Oh, he was a lot, he, could, he was really good at talking to you. He could have he, a fight he, and everything, but he could have a fight. He was one of the class less, tall lads, you know. Less with the gift of. Yeah, and he was at, talking uh, people out and said knocking them out. He was yeah, really good. He, he was at Dorman at the Kirk when the Kirk was got in its prime in 1978, 77, 1980, yeah. and that you know. Yeah. But Javed himself, going back when we were at Bentleys, he was he was really uh, good and funny, and he'd have even though it was only Bentleys, he'd have two outfits, three outfits in the office, yeah. little office, yeah. come down and have his white suit jacket on red. Oh, it was a immaculate, immaculate. Middle of the night, he'd change again, you know. Uh, and uh, I remember a couple of times there was trouble at the door, and he'd have a little he'd bit of a fight. Jimmy, you know, he used to get stuck in, didn't he? Get stuck in, he? yeah. I scared. I remember him once of the pound coins. I'm not sure what year it was that came out. That's my but uh, the pound coins was in operation, and uh, J- Javid, uh, something happened. This dickhead was at the door, and we went to give him a back. Jav said, Leave him, leave him. Yeah. Leave him, leave him. said, yeah, I'll deal with this. I've got something for you. Wait a minute. Went in, got the bag, uh, you know, the sack, what they're in. Yeah. Pound coins, about 50 of them, and went down. <laughs> Landed <laughs> the edge. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't know. There was a big, massive brawl down there, all the wrecking crew coming up. So there were about 50 of them. And, and we, the had, we, we used to back the mile door, we're not yeah. being cookie and Tony I mean, they're all mates now, the wrecking Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some good lads. But like, at the time, we, we all, we were at one club, John, we were at the John Black with Kenny Gregory, and we'd run down with 20 odd years old at the time. And, There'd be massive brawls in the street. I mean, the police when when that bothered me. Somebody had to have to press charges. You, know, yeah, no, yeah. just, you just had the fight and it was over and everything. Back the normal next day. Yeah, some good lads there, Sinker and them, and uh, all the lads. Kev Walker, I don't know whether Kev was part of the Wrecking Crew. Yeah. The man, there were some very good lads there, you yeah. know. 
Um, Matty Van was a good lad, but he wasn't in that stuff. He was, no, he was, yeah. He was an athlete, when he was in all the trade. Clean, yeah. one, of the, one of the best, probably, if not the best in this area, what he did in that. And mm. kickboxing. Oh, what well, he, he did. He was really skillful. Yeah. I think he nice influenced. And he got uh, him shot, he rubbed an 80 shot. Yeah, influenced. He was a goal, but he actually tried to stop me coming in him, rubbed an 80. Marty probably be glad about this. Still fact, true, then, Robbie. Yeah, 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 yeah. When he, 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 I said I'm coming in here, but he went and just let me in. <laughs> yeah, I had a drink of uh, that Stella. I walked in that night, but uh, yeah, there was a bit yeah. of a bitch all involved in the past. Time, wasn't it? But the so, there's been some sad things that happened. And I'll say, going back to the Street of Stringfellow thing, uh, Jab had got us all in the, uh, the, the restaurant room. And he invited us in to see Peter Stringbeller. <clears throat> and he said, yeah, this is Peter Stringbeller. And Peter was talking to us. And uh, one of the other managers uh, was talking to Peter. And he said, this How is... How is a- it wrong? <laughs> yeah, I tell you. I tell you, mate. Just, mate. He said, uh, th- this other manager said to Peter Stringfeller, this is how I think you sh- your doorman should be on the battles. Uh, and he said, they're very good doorman. And he said, but I think... Uh, he was with Peter Stringbell. He said, when you've got the door lined up here for VIP guests, paying guests, he said, and in that line up and we're all listening, you see some, not Peter Stringbell, his friend, said, you see some stunning women, big, tall women, slim figures, lovely. He said, your job should be to go out and have a look at them and say to these nice women, would you like to come in as our guest? Would you like to come in as our guest? He said and that'll flatter them and people will follow them in. I said, I know what you're saying. I said, but to be honest with you, I said, I'd do that to overweight women that don't look very good at all. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm yeah, a normal yeah, person because yeah, yeah, yeah. they're as good as them. Course, Peter yeah. String fella went like that to me. Yeah. What yeah. class. Yeah. What class. Why favour the beautiful women? Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, and it's right. Why favour anyone, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're all, we're all the same. We all bleed. We yeah, all cry. We all think, oh, this is the worst day I've ever had. And we all should be, everyone should love each other as well. And there should be more should, um, more people and, uh, each other. I just did that little bit of generosity to say yeah. hello. But thank you very much. And polite manners and stuff. I was brought up with manners, mean respect. And you give respect, you get respect. Yeah. If you end yeah, like a fool, you end up being, you get called names, bullies, yeah, and things like that. So. Uh, another, which I thought was a really a good story, this, and it involved myself, actually. Uh, I just took over the Rosebury pub, managing it with uh, Stamp, you know, Stewie Stamp. Yeah, oh, Stewie, Stewie Stamp. Uh, yeah, 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 funny lad. Great yeah, lad. He was funnier than Chubby Brown. He was. He, was, he, used to, <laughs> he had me, he, I went in, he had trouble at the new market, wasn't he? Uh, and there was a lot of the market tavern. I was saying the market tavern, tavern. I mixed up the market tavern. And there was a lad in there, he got out of jail, did about four years, and he was horrible, knocking them old men out in his 70s and that. And he got chased about the town, and I went looking for him, and he never come back. He went, he's gone, and he's just left his house and everything, he's, everything, the cars are driving, he just jumped in the taxi and went and come back. Book, yeah, it's in the book, is yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is the, uh, that's the old book we've got, if anybody wants to buy it, The Tax Man, the original 2005, that's uh, that, yeah. and that's the new one we've got, which is there. Uh, Brian Cockrell, Lee Duffy, the tax bill of tea time. Kevin Kelly's in it. Um, Kevin yeah. Kelly's in it. Oh, oh, my, my best friend, <laughs> Kevin Kelly, a little Teddy. Oh. Um, we had some great times. Um, Teddy, we used to talk with Teddy all the time. And we'd take it. Teddy was always a joker, always messing about, always having a laugh, always liked by all the people. Didn't have a care for... Uh, didn't, didn't care. Not a care. He, he didn't, he was... Well, he, he cared for fearless. everyone. He cared for everybody. He was fearless. But he didn't have Same a care about problems, did he? No, he didn't. He just hit you in the head and that's... I mean, <laughs> no, man, I, I never <laughs> actually went to the... Uh, yeah. Steam packet, you know, oh, never, we're yeah. not through any reason. I'm not being but disrespectful. Not many people could have pulled that off. Not many, I'm not being that. disrespectful, Terry, but probably the roughest place in Britain. Yeah, yeah. I'm kidding you not. It was absolutely rich. People getting stabbed every other week. No, it was, <laughs> was, yeah, yeah, was I like, used to go in. It was like road He used, used to say to me, Oh, you've done it again. I went, What? They've all left because you've come. It was all the slinks. Yeah. I said, Well, he said, Come in a bit later, about four or five. 
What the one do with oh, I don't know if I can't but never not true when I was mega popular, never, you know, ever. and it, probably it, unique in the country that yeah. Year. Of course, it's going uh, to be in the country, it's six ter- area territory, you know. Yeah, yeah. and we yeah. used to go in, I always used to pay for drinks. He said, Oh, but I always used to yeah. tell us to pay the man yeah. for something. Yeah. And I used to make him take the money before and oh you're the only one who does this and I'd go mad with me and fuck. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, he had that for years for six oh, years. I was doing, doing well with that. It had a big, 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 big name, didn't it? You know yeah. what I mean? The people from everywhere oh, yeah. going there. Tra- 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 Travellers you know. used to go. And, but yeah. you, you know who we met there? You'll never believe. Mm-hmm. Was um, the snooker player. Um, I know he's what do you call him. Alex, Alex Higgins. Really? Yeah, he was in there. Yeah, Terry yeah, 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 He was yeah. in there and he was doing a book. His life story was really mm-hmm. painfully thin. He was, the cancer had gone. And he was in there. And, and Dave Woody had reduced. He said, This is Brian Cockrell. He's the main lad round here, and this is, I said, oh, Alex Higgins, he was tiny. You know, when you see him on the telly, he looked a lot bigger. And he's jumping on me back, and somebody stole his coat. Really? Uh, yeah, somebody yeah. pinched his coat out in there that night. He's Terry a great player, wasn't he? Oh, brilliant, but he was there. He was Higgins. Higgins, yeah, yeah. 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 Higgins. Yeah, he was wild, there. Right? Yeah, he was wild. Yeah. He was wild. Yeah. <laughs> referees. <laughs> that was funny. It's the same as us. I knew she was, so. Proper wild man. Yeah, he was good, he was good though, player. Yeah, he was. He was a people's choice, one yeah. people's champion. Yeah, he was great, wasn't he? Yeah, going back to Matt Millen's uh, uh, story, which it probably sickened the police in one way. This, and I'd got picked up from a taxi nine o'clock, uh, well, half eight, Friday, Saturday night when the big night was there. Yeah. And obviously, there probably was drugs in Matt Millen's end, but I, I honestly got I went in, involved yeah. in it. I got that. Got the taxi <laughs> up, and uh, anyway, as I'm getting there, the security lad runs about fifty meters away from the main door. No customers in yet. Yeah. Kevin, Kevin, the coppers are here. How many of them? Easy, 12 or 14, Kevin, CID. He said, they're waiting for you. I know they are. They're waiting for you. And I paused the taxi driver. Luckily, I knew the taxi driver. And I paused him and I thought, and I had a bag with me in Old Hall. And I said to the taxi driver, take that Old Hall back to the pub. I said, there's nothing dodgy in it. But there was something in it what I could have used to defend myself. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it got really, yeah. really bad, you know. Yeah. But it wasn't nothing really bad. But yeah. yeah. There was no drugs or nothing yeah. like that in it. It was just a Kalashnikov. <laughs> <laughs> was that MP5? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it goes in, it surrounds me. Uh, can you take your crombie off, please? Start taking off. Said, listen, uh, we've had off good information, Kevin, and been operation. Uh, we're going to probably rest you at night. I had my other old doll uh, with us, yeah, a little, a little one. Uh, we believe that you're supplying drugs to Macmillan's. Believe you were the main person, and you blah blah blah. <laughs> have you any drugs on you? And I said, uh, I actually have, but the only drugs I have on us are some uh, Lanzoprazole and some beta blockers. Yeah. I said, and I, w- I was probably a little bit cheeky. I said, so if you want to fucking search me, search me, no problem. I wait there smiling, smiling, yeah. smiling. The search, and one of them says, you waste your time. He's not got anything on him. Oh, he's too clever for it, which he wasn't. I was too clever. I didn't, didn't do, do it. it. Did you? you didn't do it, no. I didn't do it. Anyway, when they went, my adrenaline was going a bit, not through fear, and I thought, why didn't Lal and Kenny Gregory what Kenny didn't know tell oh, me and I pulled yeah. Kenny Kenny said Kevin I knew that about it I said someone must have done yeah because they could have given the word you? Yeah. Go, and, go and get three Lal yeah I went into the office and Lal was sat there doing his paperwork great bloke hello Kevin how are you doing alright see the police have just been there uh, says Lal do you not think it was bad that you couldn't have phoned me up told me that the police were waiting here yeah. for me. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Then casually put his pen down. He says, Kevin, you were the best doorman I've ever worked with. He said, I didn't have to. I knew, he didn't have a swear. He said, I knew you'd have fuck all on me. <laughs> I know you weren't dealing with that. Yeah. And he said, when the police came back in, I said, bye. Have you checked him out now? So give all he's doing you, I wasn't yeah. up to it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was the story. Amazing. Everyone said it loves the stories. Yeah, that was all true, weren't they? There's, lo- there's lots of more. Sort of more. And uh, next week, I'm going to... Uh, there's another story I want to tell about Matt Millen's. Yeah. 
Uh, not honestly, maybe it's a good idea if I can just do the questions with you. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Just say, uh, I'll be sure. Just call you. Kevin's the tax man. Does any size on any build? Any build, yeah. Any build, brilliant lad. Um, lovely lad. One of my best friends. He said, I'm the best fighter he's ever seen, but I always say he's the best fighter I've ever seen. But lovely man from Sunderland. All the doors up there. Uh, big Brian Lofton. Wayne, Bob Brawl, all of them used to go up there and used to see them. Been up there for tons of times, fighting people with him. And we went in the club one night, and then you'll remember this. And it was the doorman, he had white jackets on, and he had a black dicky pose. And the doorman was like, oh, he said, we're going to let us in. I said, yeah. I just pushed past him, being ignorant of this book. It was there, he was over in the town there. He and Flynn used to work up there for him and that. He was the world champion, he another great yeah, he was man, a yeah. world champion cage fight, absolutely. Like, mm. Not one of these pretend ones. No, Got the problem yeah. all over America. I mean, you can make any titles oh, right now, can you? This, just, you, know, you go to the shop and buy a belt, I'm the world champion. No, just yeah, up. And then when you check up, the, all you have to do is, anyone who says they're world champion, go on Facebook, put the name in, it'll come up. If you bank title, it comes through. If you put anyone, Garside, mm. 45, 45. Box seconds, yeah. Isn't it? yeah, you put it in anything, any type of mixed martial arts, anything you can check to see if they've made it up. But yeah, so we go to this club and there was about, I don't know, seven, eight dormer in, and they all started to come near us. And uh, I said, oh, yeah, he said, I said, I think he's going to have a go here. And he said, oh, the dog, that's the dog in the back of the home, having a sniff of help <laughs> or something. <laughs> uh, so the next minute I went, yeah, do you want to fucking go? Jump in? No, no, no. The, the <laughs> asses went. So we were coming out and I said, oh, this is his club, you know, because they're, they're on this door yeah. of the area. So as we're going out, there was a man and woman fighting in the street. Mm. So the, the fight night, man, I broke it up. But the police came over and arrested me. And then he went, what's that we're doing? And the cop was lucky we were there. The copper mm -hmm. in the street said, he broke it up. So I let me off. But we had loads of fun with there. And he used to come to the, I said, I got him one night. You remember this, Ernie? I used to go into the park. You couldn't drink in the, in the raves. You could get a rave. You could open it. Yeah, just water, we could only have water or Coca-Cola and tobacco. So I used to get Coke. I'd go to the four o'clock shop in Stockton and get the Bacardi in there and go in put it in the car. What's that cool? I love it. And he went, what the hell? And it was Bacardi. And he went, and I started him having a little drink on the door with him because he didn't drink, you see. And he said, have a few miles with him. We had some fun with him then. He's one of them people, all the others you could go out with, you couldn't trust them. You had to keep your chin down when you're talking mm. to them. He's top fighters. You know, ones like Viv Graham's and people like that, you couldn't trust them. But then he offered me a full of drugs, full of drink. I like the media. And he never met Ever, him, ever, right? ever, yeah. ever. Never felt fear. Yeah. I never felt anything because like, he could fight for fun. Yeah. You know, he fought a big lad up there, Newcastle Way, six foot four. He went on his own. Uh, went there, had the fight with the lad, beat him. Viv Graham met him on the side. And then Ernie went back to have a go with him and he apologized yeah. to Ernie and said, um, the lads who, I won't mention the lads name, but the lads who we had the fight with was like a dad to him type of thing. Mm. So lovely bad Ernie. Um, mm. but he's got a very, very, very good reputation. Oh, yes. I've not heard people speak bad of him. Like never, this, you know what? I've that, never heard of him. Not one lovely person man. call him, yeah. not a soul yeah. call him. And uh, he, yeah, I like he, to meet he, him. Yeah. He, he loves me a bit. I love him a bit. I knew he. Uh, I, 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 yeah. I, I knew he really liked Bri. Uh, yeah, he's I like Bri. I love you. Yeah. I love you. No. And I knew the bloke tonight. Yeah, yeah. Have you? yeah. Oh, big Joe Egan. We've done a form about oh, 30 minutes. I said, Thank you for the support, Joe. I said, It's an honor to know. Big Philip. It's an honor to help you. I'm. I love you too. And absolutely to lovely, lovely I mean, man. He's a real, real lad, man. Oh, you know, seven I think people think we're mesmerised with that, man. We're not yeah, just no, no. given credit where it's due. Joe, yeah. Yeah. I mean, big Joe Egan, for people who don't know him, he was a seven times Irish champion heavyweight boxer. And he, he, he sparred with the great Mike Tyson. And Tyson said he was the hardest white man he ever uh, sparred with in his life. Hardest man he's ever white man. Absolutely. Joe, Tyson, Joe says, he's I mean, Joe's response to it, he's dead humble. He went, he said, no, I'm just the hardest man in the gym that day. <laughs> he's just a lovely man. He, 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 yeah. He's a lovely, lovely man. He's going to come up and see us. He, just, he can't tolerate bullies. Yeah, I know. And that's why he's helped us with this. Um, the, he's I come know, the campaign yeah. we've got us. Mm. Everyone out there has been Tony Turner. Brilliant lad, isn't he? Yeah. Teddy Ellis, Ben Span, all these other people have been uh, helping us. It's been brilliant, isn't it? And Les Peacock, I've got a, a thing for him to do this week. Um, he's a good lad from Newcastle. Uh, loads of kids out there supporting us and them. Yeah. See, some of these people who were uh, 
<laughs> making comment about uh, you, Bryce. Some people, there's probably a few I don't know, yeah. but some of them might make comments. Uh, for instance, oh, he, he hasn't done that. He hasn't done that. He wasn't this. He wasn't that. Yeah. How old are some of them people? Some of them only 30, 35. Yeah, they went How the them. fuck would you use them? You know, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I was there and I was his I friend, was. not because he's a hard man. And this man here could be very, very fast, can punch, can yeah. take punches better than anyone. And he can be very, very, very violent when he wants to be. And some people should be glad that it's not a while ago. It's not that he's past it, it's that. He's he got lots, lots to live for now. You know, really came out the other day and a couple of people threw up the road <laughs> and I lost my temper uh, for the first time. So it ended up to get Tony Grange and he come up and help me. Did he <laughs> calm me down? But I lost the plot. Um, with all this carry on, but uh, yeah, you know, calm myself down. Now, Tony's prayed for me and we're happy. But uh, yeah. the thing is, we were getting called liars about this situation, it's going to escalate now that. We're not liars. Believe me, the people, the perpetrators, they will be brought to justice. It's absolutely horrendous, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, broke my, my And thank my you heart. to the people who've come forward. Yeah, and all the all the people who've come forward told us the stories, especially from what the called, historic abuse. What she called the lad from with uh, oh, Sam Lambler. Sam Lambler from Wayfield, the author. Yeah. Lovely story he told you the other yeah. day, didn't he? Made, yeah, made, 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 is he author book right? He's, he's dad, author. His dad had yeah. a book out. Um, yeah. about the because mm. you need yeah. to do a couple yeah. more booths. Yeah, that, right. that, that story what, what you read earlier on, you yeah. obviously won't speak about right, it. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable, the next one. You need to do some of the booths. I even mentioned the Terry Dick Dave Thomas, night. thank you. Yeah, Dave Thomas from Eston, another one who's come forward and told us a great story and that's been taken down as well. So there's loads, isn't there? And yeah, the, loads. yeah you, you need to do another booth, you know. Definitely yeah, need to. Yeah, yeah. I even said to Terry, he needs to, but do one in these words of yeah. his man, of his character. Because yeah. I could tell a few stories about him, which he doesn't even know. I know. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And uh, funny as fuck, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. He didn't yeah. give a shit about now, did he? Yeah. But he? He was lucky, Terry, you know, and I'm glad he hasn't. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you're watching Terry. Yeah. Uh, you, you, I, I give him yeah. compliments for how forgiving and yeah. patient he's been. He's given people yeah. a chance after chance after chance. I know, so. The people are very lucky. Again, it wasn't a few years ago. Well, Terry, you Terry, know, Terry well, that's, uh, the you police know. actually come here for Terry. And it, on it, it, situation. Terry's been in jail doing life. Yeah, yeah, we've got yeah. the police actually came here looking for Terry because they'd sent them. Saying when you threatened their kids, this is and threatened them with how many knife. times was it the police? Uh, four, five, four times they come. Times. Um, phoned the door on my wife, phoned mm. the customs, phones the, the um, sitting advice yeah. group people, mm. never ending. But every time they come, yeah, the, the lies they've made up and spawn a lies. But this man from Workfield has just buried them now with a statement yeah. he's made, it's just phenomenal. The proof he's got, all the screenshots, yeah. everything. Yeah, it's just you've read it yourself, Kevin. Yeah. It was absolute. My friend Rob Holloway from Dingy, lovely lad, he used to say me supported. He said these people are crazy, absolutely crazy. So all these things I supposed to be lying and my wife's lying. It's all gonna come out, I promise you. I'm not being funny, but it's a bit like yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy Savile. Yeah. Carry on. It's just yeah. like that. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it's all there, the truth, you know. Yeah, tell you what he looked like years ago, and a little bit now, you know. Yeah. When he was a, a, a little kid, as yeah. as I was when I said I seen him at the fairground. He'd have got a part once upon a time in America when the kids were yeah. Yeah, the yeah. Brooklyn yeah. Bridge and that. You but know. he looked yeah. like Kess. Yeah, no, Kess yeah. off the film Kess. He looked yeah. like him. Yeah, he had, yeah, he had a spitting pot of him, but uh, he's just done my garden bless him today. I had to try and offer him a few, couldn't he? wouldn't take it. He's a, he's, he is a humble lad. He's, he's he changed his life around like I have. Um, and he's just got in the violence. He's a dad that helps yeah. him on. He I'll tell you what's a little story the other day. He was in a taxi. Get the taxi, didn't have a lot of money on him. Um, going to his house, found a purse in the taxi, went here, mate. I found a purse here. Okay, and my know. mates just to say there's a lovely place in Thornby in there. Yeah. Oh, what's it called? Yeah. Oh, the flaming grill. The flaming grill. With the shabs, shabs, or shabs, shabs or oh, absolutely beautiful oh, food. Shab, if you watch, you know, I'm going to give you Imi. a call. And Imi, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, beer. yeah it looks awesome. excellent. Oh, we've been, we've yeah. had the meals. We went through, we actually showed us the two. Well, we were going to have a, yeah. our wedding party because oh, we never yeah. managed to have our dance because we're through all the, ill. Through the trolls. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, through the trolls. So we're going to have a, like a, a yeah. 
party in there this year, so you're like, it looks great. Yeah, the two great blokes, I mean, oh, the lovely two great, 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 the train with Reggie yeah. Long, Shab, you're Shab, right. Shab's good. Yeah. The train well, I, had, I had trouble one day, and I asked him to come up. A couple of travellers supposed to be coming, a few other lads to the house. There's about 120 of them outside my house for about 20 minutes. Well, so yeah, yeah. All the whole street was yeah. them. We're all stood to me, you know, absolutely yeah, brilliant they're lads. They're very, very good very, lads. And they're, they're not doing they're not very well liked. They're, not, they're already in the farm now, but they yeah. back their friends up and they stand by. Yeah, they don't try and gain yeah. popularity. No, they're no, just no. very Lovely people. But very Terry, I'll go back this story with her, but Terry, so he finds this person in the taxi, I think it was about four or five days ago, and he said that one of Shab's drivers and that, and uh, Marvin's, Marvin's, my brother, um, no, the wounds it, um, Indian lads, but in fact, that lads, yeah, lovely lads. Uh, and it was, I think, three or four hundred pounds in the purse. So he looked in the ID and checked the thing for that was an old woman, she'd come out the zimmer for yeah. I think, or something like that, or a carer or something. Mm. And the carer come on the phone, that was it, and said, Oh, thank you very much what you've done, and thank you. So the taxi driver's to phone him and said, Thank you very much for your time. So then he comes, comes back on you, and he called it. Could, could, it's could, something could, we could would do that, you know. Yeah, was, that's what well, that's how old school yeah, I, I did it once. Do. I was in, I was in Billingham as a kid, and I went to, uh, to get some presents in. Middlesbrough, I mm. got the train through, and I was at this used to be Greg's, and they used to have a booth where you could sit in, like where you could sit a few of these round the seats, and you'd sit in there eating. And you went, this old lady got up, must be now seventy, with a purse out of a pocket just on the floor. And I said, "Here, love, you've dropped your purse." Went, oh, thank you, thank you. She said, and "You grabbed me, and she, it's all the grandkids' money. There's six hundred pounds." Yeah, and this was yeah, when I was yeah, about eighty yeah, years old, yeah, yeah. probably like two grand now or something. But yeah. uh, you couldn't live with yourself thinking yeah, you well, that money, you know. A man, I don't honestly to God, I, I couldn't. I think if I took that and it was someone whose money that was yeah. well earned or whatever, yeah. whether a rich person or poor, yeah. that's going to bring me bad luck. That you know, that you, uh, it's not yeah. right. Well, a few yeah, times yeah. in cash machines, people have walked away. Well, the day I did just yeah. for 20 quid, yeah. Have you left this, mate? Yeah, no, well, yeah. then uh, a friend came around to see us, a uh, lad. Well, the do, lad, my own business come to see, he got a book and he dropped his wallet. At the door, and Emma found it, and it was two and a half grand in it. She phoned me up, so I think you've dropped your wallet. Went, oh, there's two and a half grand in there. Mm. It, it must have going to pay bills or somewhere. Yeah. And uh, he, he went, oh, anyone else would have just kept that. I yeah. would have had a clue. He yeah. said, where I lost it, but you can't do that, your friend. No, you, you know? can't. No. Okay. Do you want a chicken sandwich? Uh, no, but I'll have another little bit of that, please. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's a chicken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you can do as you want to take with it. I'll take you back. Yeah, yeah. 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 you know, years ago. Cost the fortune to keep with you. You know, I used to have some. Ex- I used to make a joke a bit, but I used yeah. to have exclusive. Christmas dinner of beans on toast, you know. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah that's so good. Do you like your... I'm only kidding, man. Do, like, yeah. do you like cheddar uh, coleslaw? So yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have the podcast here. What are you doing? Thinking <laughs> <laughs> about how dinner he ends. You're thinking about my food. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she forgot all about you guys. Uh, Winky uh, Watts, good night, Winky. I've just seen his name there. Oh, Winky's a good lad. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Sounds a pound. I don't know him well, Winky, but I spoke to him in the Dunbar yeah. Yeah, a few years ago. Yeah, I'm saying it, I know him, yeah. Uh, and, and he had a chat to me and he said, Your son's doing great, Richard. Just tell him to make sure he keeps yeah. away from the Amazon. And and you're right, Winky, you're right. Maximus Aurelius is saying, I'll have a cheese sauce, the Emma, please. Yeah, he's good lads in the army lads. And I think that. Winky's got a boxing gym now, and he trains some of the younger lads yeah. in that. And what yeah, have you? He's really good, he's, yeah, he's good lad. Yeah, another little uh, story, Bri, about the Macmillans. Yeah, uh, you'll know who it is, but I'm not going to mention his name. Yeah, uh, and not that we wanted any problems or trouble anyway, it was just a safeguard thing. Uh, it was a Christmas time on. A while ago, and it's uh, all good. It's going a bit. I'll just say uh, thank you to Ben Doherty as well, who's um, obviously come out with what his statement about these trolls as well. Another live top boxer from London, uh, Terry Ellis, Tony Turner, all the other Rob, El- Rob Ellis, all uh, had it, you know, just never ending with him. Yeah, yeah, so sorry, mate. Come on. Yeah, and uh, uh, there'd been a, a call to say that the oh, tall man. trees was going to get robbed after time. They used to take maybe sometimes 30, 40 grand a night then. And what we were going to do about it, and Java says, 
anyone comes here, try and rob it, just give them the money. And my great friend and mentor, Betty Bury, if she's watching, uh, said, no, well, me and Dennis will stay back. And Dennis Bury, who was older than me, he's dead now, God bless him. Yeah. Me and him sat back in the restaurant we're no, no, not that we were going to try and apprehend them. We were just going to put it all off and stood there all night waiting for this to happen. It didn't happen. Yeah. Listening to Glenn Campbell songs. You oh, know, yeah. Drinking so coffee, coffee, you know. Coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. had some fun over the years for, for Terry as well. Too. Me and Terry used to do the debts. We used to do debts. Say, for instance, people would say, we were two grand or something. And somebody would rip them. They couldn't get it for the cost and so so me and Terry would go like 50-50. And I used to always say, Sean Day talked with the saying, he used to say, half a loaf is better than no loaf of bread. So half the money for you and half for us. Mm. So we do the debt, me and Terry, and we go, and we went to a few places. And he said, sometimes they'll go, it's not the money, you know. He said, it's the principal. So I said, all right. Well, I'll keep the money, and you'll keep the principal then. It was always the money. <laughs> they go, no, no. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, we used to have good laughs, me and Terry. But he used to always talk to people with bragging. He's the one who pinched the pigeons on the pub. Mm. He's making it up, joking. The joking. Yeah, yeah. I was pissing him out. It was him, Brian. Now we got red because the lad said, Brian, I never pinched I've never had a pigeon in my life, but he was yeah. right. Brian, he's the one who was in your pigeon loft and pinched the pigeon. And everyone in the pub would be laughing because Teddy'd have them over. We had some great laughs, you know. Yeah. We still have great laughs. We've really, really, he'd been here today with Tony, um, said, um, not Tony said, I'm sorry, but the other one, uh, Marty Turner, the boxing uh, legend trainer. And he was talking to Joe Egan for about 30, 20 minutes or something. Uh, you're telling us all the stories about Joe, Joe Egan. I mean, Joe come when he was telling us all the stories about Marty, where he went to Sweden, I think, with him to boxing yeah. place at Arnie's run about uh, Cornelius Carr and people like that. So Marty knows this man really well, but we've had a good day, haven't we? Went to Red yeah, County, yeah, big yeah, John yeah. Pickering. Um, and he got, uh, oh, that's, if you can see smoke, yeah. John Pickering, I'll tell you, if you can see smoke coming in, we're not on fire system ever with an e thing. <laughs> He's got a new e thing of John, so thank you very much, John, for that. Go on, yeah, uh, uh, another one I was just going to mention, you know, when I was on about that New Year's Eve thing where, well, I don't know whether it was New Year's Eve, Christmas, and we stayed back all night with Dennis. Uh, but another funny story I was told off a lad who I know pretty well, uh, we just sold his hotel for, I won't mention his name, Yeah, we sold his hotel for 220 grand, and he's a really small bloke, and something happened and he was coming around here to see you and he got in a taxi with someone that uh, i'm not sure what it was over it yeah. wasn't trouble yeah i think he owed you some money or something whatever and come in gave the money to you come back to rebels where i have a drink it was only about six years ago this and uh he come in he went <sighs> i'm in shock I said what's the matter steve steve they called him you know what i mean i'm in shock He's laughing, he said, give me a drink, get the drinks in. Get the drinks in, everyone, have a drink, have a drink. Give me the flash alley, he sold his hotel, 220 grand. God, he said, you won't believe what I've just seen. I'll take it to my grave. What? I've just been to Brian Cockrell's house. <laughs> I've seen him at the top of the stairs in a pair of boxer shorts. <laughs> oh! <laughs> he was that mesmerised yeah, by, yeah. Yeah. you know, me, don't you say, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so we, we, I remember going, we used to go out and you don't, I, I never caused trouble. People would come to me. And it was just army lads, he's like six foot, six, four, six, five, six. This is the lad where I hit in the club. But there was another kid in the way before, and he was like as big as I said in the book, he was as big as Eddie Elwood. But that idiot. Yeah, he, he, he misworded it. He misworded it. said it was Eddie it, Elwood, it. but it wasn't Eddie. Yeah, no, he it. So anyway, what happened is he was walking around massive. And he's bullying everyone. And he come at me and I just fucking banged him. He looked great with all the muscles laid on the floor. Mm. But it wasn't actually Eddie. Yeah. It was so I was just trying to no. describe to the people in the book what type of size he was. Yeah. You know, I was actually giving him a compliment. And I, I think and if then, you remember, I went up next yeah, day. Yeah, did, yeah. 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 And then there was um, another kid in there we were in. And it was from Ali. He's not here now. A few lads from Artie Paul. And the lads were all four, six, five, or seventeen stories. He said, oh, I'm the uh, champion boxer in the army. I was on charges, I had two, three charges up for assaults. Oh, she pissed us off. We had a few drinks, got him a drink. And he, sometimes people take your kindness as a weakness. And he said to me, with you being so big, you're probably slow and you get out of breath quick. And my friend Peter O, who's no, no longer with us, stabbed by cowards, 
lovely lad from Meston, brilliant person. I met him, nice lad, yeah. Good run, he used to run up the hills with my backpack, fittest lad I've ever met. He used to go in the back, do 20 minute rounds, and he was, he was brilliant, you know. He looked the part as well. Oh, he was brilliant, yeah. ripped to the bone, and lovely man. And uh, this lad was going on anyway. Pete was with his missus, and I was in Manhattan. Anyway, this kid come at me, and I boom, hit him this right over court and just knocked him clean out. I said, was that fast enough for you when he woke up? <laughs> and Peter ran over, he went, you only, you only throw a punch from about like, yeah. three or four inches. <clears throat> Took his head clean off, and he said, and then there was another night we were in there. I was a lad, I used to work at the door, and he's from Gisborne. I won't mention the lad's name. Big lad, big ginger lad. I, I want to fight you. So I always stand with me, that fight with Duffy when he'd be on the slide, the first fight. I always stand with my chin down now when I talk to Peter in case mm. he get caught. So it, it keeps me right. So he, says, he, so he tried, but most people, what they do is they can't throw a left hook. You can only throw the straight right, so they have to put the left foot forward and the right foot back flat to throw the right hand. Mm. So if you square them off, once you walk across them, so you, 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 you can't throw that punch. And he kept sneaking his foot down to try and hit me with his right hand. In the end, I went bang and ordered him in the face, mm. broke his nose. He goes, I'm the best, we were still saying to me, I'm the best fighting guest, but I'm this and I'm that. I said, look, behave yourself. And somebody said I was in there with a the gun that night, the police had been, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it was somebody mm. else. Anyway, he, he goes, I'm the best fight in Gisborne. So he said, now I want to fight you. And I went, I noted him and I broke. He still got a big split right across his nose. He jumped him again, noted him again. He went down again, his nose was even worse. And when he got up, he went, I went, I guess I must be the best fight in Gisborne. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a true story. Yeah. Right? yeah. I say some of the people, when you, when some of these people now all making quotes who were, you know, under 40, 30, 35 and that. They've yeah. never been around. And you can't predict something or say something. It's only second. It's only 20 years uh, later. Yeah. Something. I mean, yeah. it, you were perfect, even though I'm not encouraging violence. But a lot of people, they work and you're up trying to come here where you were that big, you could hit, which is very hard to do with a, a short travelling punch, yeah. six or seven inches. Well, he, he said to me, yeah. Uh, people out, you know. Well, he said to me, um, He's quite the big lad, um, you know. Richie Orsley, good lad from Artipo. He said, I've never seen anyone generate that much power. I'm not being big, I'm just that's telling short distance, yeah. That's short distance. He said, mm -hmm. they can't get away because you caught them. And I used to hit them on the chin there and break the yarn three places. And it would mm -hmm. be called the guardsman's fracture. I will tell you why it's called the guardsman's fracture. The guards stand on duty for the Queens. And the fall and the pivot of the chin that breaks in three places. And I went up with a taxi driver who paid off for the, for the member that well, I won't yeah, mention yeah, his name. Yeah, 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 and yeah. he hit him once and brought him down three places. And Barry Stewart, the great Barry yeah. Stewart, was a barrister, got enough of that charge. Uh, Bad never, injuries. Could never yeah. up. Somebody, the thing is, Brian, yeah, is, as I say, we're not promoting it. No, I mean, no, we, it's just we, what happened in the past. We probably, uh, at times, no, obviously, you no. more so, we might have hit people who we didn't want or you'd like to no, apologise to no. them, but. But some people you've uh, covered who deserved it, but yeah. the, you have inflicted quite a lot of serious injuries on yeah, yeah. And you were probably lucky that you didn't kill someone. Yeah, for any But well, then again, you're fucking up, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, then, yeah, today with that same statement, yeah, they're finished. Yeah, so any he come down, another fight with Dave, yeah, I side who's all right with us now. Uh, it was just the old days. Yeah, it was a great boxer. Oh, he was a great boxer. Out, uh, yeah, he, career. He, he went to pro. Yeah, went to pro he before. Say, and before yeah, that yeah. one, series, he had a yeah. great pro career. Yeah, he actually but fought. He, he was ABA yeah. champion, so That's he right. had a, a good background. Absolutely brilliant boxer. He fought yeah, for the that. British uh, British heavyweight title against Horace Notice. And he was standing his ground for six rounds, and Horace Notice yeah, was a brilliant fight for Liverpool. And uh, he had, I think, something like 44 fights. No more. You know? I think he's, he's promoting life. Yeah, he is. He's, he's, a now, he? yeah, he's yeah. done well for himself, hasn't he? Glenn McCrory. And, and I think he might, did he marry Brian London's That's daughter? Right, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't yeah. know, Dave. Well, I've spoken yeah. to Madame, but yeah, yeah, he's done very, Brian very, very was well. Boxer, yeah. he? He, 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 uh, he, he owned half of Blackpool. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but people caused trouble and said, he said, she said, he said, she said. And that's why Lee Duffy. Was probably where he, he used to do that. You, Lee Duffy wind up like a clock, clockwork toy. A couple of people used to say, He said, This is what you he said, that Lee, and Lee will go and hit them. And but I learned to leave yeah, on. You've got to check up first. A yeah. lot of people did uh, did wind him up and like yeah. to be with him for his protection, but yeah. wind him up too early. You know, uh, yeah, was daft. Well, this story is about Lee punching people every day. It was absolute nonsense. Mm -hmm. we, we, we knew him, didn't we? He yeah. was fighting, he used to be loved that challenge. And, uh, I mean, I, I think in I mean, one sense you really, uh, even though I didn't see much of you at the time, I, I think you probably 
uh, really, really calmed him. Not calmed yeah, him yeah. down, but well, he, he said, he said, him he in, said, you know. He said to his partner, he said, he went there, the he night said he died, partner, you know, um, he's the unstoppable force. He said he's like giant ace, that yeah. he's monstrous. Scotch Brian, Dave Thomas, who comes in the week, we tell the stories because Dave actually worked with him. Mm. He went to school with him. He went, he said, he said, oh, I get him. He said, what? He said, he half went down. Pushed himself up and yeah. ragged me around. He said, Dave said, he's just, he said, Lee said, it's unbelievable. He's just strength. Yeah, no. He said, at the end of the day, he said, I get him when we better shot you. Well, that's every but strength. Right, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. your, your, your jaw, yeah. everything. Well, the last time in the well, I, I, we went down because like, it was a bit sneaky. Yeah, going but, in yeah he did it on a slide. It was sneaky, yeah, yeah. but most men in the world would have went down yeah. there. But, but he, he did say, um, he did say when we shot me on, he said, Oh, you were just too strong. When you got old, yeah, yeah, yeah. was a nightmare. But, but I mean, he was all that year, he, he got back together. Yeah, but he phoned us up, King's Head, and phoned us up, and I went went and seen him. Mark Miller took us there. Hello, Carol, Brian. Uh, hello, Carol. Hello, Carol. Carol, was, Carol was, was his partner. <coughs> two, yeah. two children to him. I was just going to mention Peter, Carol yeah, there, you love, know. Lovely lady. Um, but, uh, yeah, Lee, but Lee wasn't as bad as what these trolls are saying and trying to make money out of him and tell lies about him making things up. And that's the reason yeah, yeah. why they saw this troll started because yeah, me and my wife pulled away from the book. We wouldn't do the Lee Duffy book because it was all lies, Lee. Yeah. About the pinch little pound shops that didn't exist, about another he story. Was, was wrong uh, Lee, that, Lee yeah. supposed to have been going to get shot that night. There was four men with shotguns going to shoot him on the corner. There was another one where eight men come out and beat him up. They said, but. Uh, Crowbars and nearly killed, uh, battered him to death nearly, but there was no mark on him. I thought, yeah. I've never read these stories, so I, that's why I pulled out. And the stories is punching yeah. people. He was saying it was that narcissistic. He used to want to break everyone's jaw and knock them out. Uh, Brian used to want to make the money. I said, No, he didn't do that at all. Mm. He only hit one person yeah. of South Bank, and he only hit that person because he bullied him at school. So yeah, Lee yeah. went over and slapped him. Me and Craig Owen Lee used to make Lucy run about doing run about all. Craig could die for fun. Brilliant body was Craig there. knocking about his Yeah, time. Craig was there. I bet you that had some saying, well, that idiot, that, that idiot troll. But you had some book, great time, he's going, uh, now then, now then. He I didn't like say it Craig. like that. He said it like this. Now then. Now then. Oh, you don't, big fella. That's mm. how he talked. It wasn't mm. now then, now then, like Jimmy Savile. Yeah. Nothing to do with Jimmy Savile. So I told the troll. And he started writing this in the books. And just misconstrues everything. Mm. And lies. And, but he, it, Craig used to go, mm. now then. He'll tell you, um, your mate, but um, Denny, Denny Oil. Denny, yeah, yeah. He had the same type of pattern as Craig. They used to bounce off each other. Yeah, they did. And, and they yeah, had the yeah, same yeah, type yeah, of pattern. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and Craig, yeah. he'll tell you, he used to, he was the first person to start that in, like the way he said it, but not like Jimmy Savile. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, he, was, he was funny, yeah. Craig. He was really he was clever. Very funny, well, yeah. Really good driver. He could be best driver I've ever known. Yeah, he'll he get away from the cops. I, my Lee, we, we went to, we went to, um, my tax dollar, I've got 700 quid. Went there, never had a drug in my life. I was about 26 and a half. We go to uh, Gateshead. We got in this house and we got this coke. I'm not going to lie to people, I'll tell the truth. Goes in this house, put this guy in the coke down. I'm never had a drug. Never had that. Had this 10 pound north thing, I had to go. Because you were never in the team. Never took it out until I was 26 and a half. Uh, yeah, when yeah, I had yeah. the fight with Lee, it was March because me and you were there actually. And it was 1991. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, we, we goes there. Anyway, Craig's, I'm in the back because the sides of me, he's in the front, Craig and Lee. Anyway, Lee sat there. Obviously, he's been shot. His foot was bad. He's having this call. We've seen this man in New York, uh, getting well gated. We're driving all the way back, and I was about, when I went to get back, I went, stone fuck all of me, that stuff, you know. They went, they went, <laughs> like, they're still left. They were drinking mm -hmm. coke and that. And I went, what's the matter with you? So, yeah. blow the ticks, he went, You've never fucking stopped talking all the way back from you, but from Gates, and we haven't got a word from you. We're laughing our heads off there. So we had some good times, Lee. And then yeah. the night when I knew he was a good lad, we were out little Teddy Dick was uh, doing this Cossack dance. Yep, the big fella. <laughs> it was uh, Dave Wood and all them, Rob Stoggers. We had some good fun. And Dave Lee, and Rob are good lads. Uh, Lee yeah. used to be able to squat on one leg. I know he's, he's strong as a bull, can you do this? He used to squat on one leg and put him up, 16 stone or something. And he could come back up and do a squat on one leg and he jump, jumped about. Anyway, he, he gave me this half a biscuit. Hey, right, Scrappy's just coming to see his guys. Um, he gave me this half a biscuit, which was ecstasy. <laughs> First time I'd had it, anyway, I dropped this tablet, as you call it. And I'm at the bar, and it was uh, the one in Middlesbrough. 
what was it in Middlesbrough we used to go? Havana. The Havana. We're in the Middlesbrough in the van, that was it. And Lee said, Danny Danton, he loved it. What was that? Stiggy Statton. What was that? Candy Statton, is it? Candy Statton. That was his favourite song at the time, yeah. that one. Young Arts from Free. No, you've got the love. You've got the love to see me through. I couldn't remember the song. He always used to dance with his hands in the air. I always had like one hand dance with his hands. His proper favourite song was Battle of Hell. Yeah, that was Carol's. His proper favourite song was Battle of Hell. Because Carol Edwards, obviously, was like a motorbike, a chick type of thing. She was into that type of music, which was. The big lad, yeah, 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 great song. And he used to sing that song in the car with the kids and that. Anyway, if, um, so Lee, I'm having this thing and I'm cabbage. Anyway, uh, so I, I'm thinking uh, um, I'm still at the bar, and the next minute, uh, I was getting a bit paralyzed, you know, because I was like <laughs> off my head. So I was like, I'm <laughs> cabbage on these, eh? Because when you have them, you can't, like, you're better than cabbage. Never had one had you your cabbage like that, you yeah. know, when you first have it. I was stood there anyway. You only picked fella. I went, yeah. And I was like, he's going to film me in here now. I'm going to get a good eye lead up here. That's what I thought, though, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. couldn't, you couldn't do that because he obviously did a drug. And he went, come here, you big bastard. And he's trying to get me out with the ghost out. And it was a little, like a Fiat Polo. I don't know exactly what the car yeah. was, but we were in it. And we got in it and we went to Brian Flarty's. We love Brian. Big yeah, Brian. Love it. Yeah. Ghost to his. And then we went on there. We, had a, we drank a bottle of vodka. And then we went there. <laughs> Another one, a lovely man. You remember, um, you still have the Belmont. Um, oh, Freddie Veers. Freddie Veers. Yeah, oh, yeah. what a lovely man he was. And rest, Freddy, God, yeah. God rest his soul. We go to there with Freddie. Come in, big fella. Come in. But in there, and Lee, we, we just went around and we just did what we wanted. Yeah. And we just, yeah. nobody nobody could fight Lee. Nobody could fight me. But yeah. together, God rest another one. Lee Harrison, a lovely lad. He said to us, we met him was in the Atlanta. He was going yeah. to Brian Andrews Club. And he was clean, doing out fat sourcing, it was called, in mm. the, the restaurant. And uh, the next minute, um, me and Lee, Lee took me in and said, this is Teddy, you've got him sawn away, like he's always going to put me fence up, he's always doing on roofs and everything's all over the place. So he's, he's on there, Teddy, all right, this is by my mom. And um, I'd only been told about Teddy because we went by one day and he was talking to John Black, I was only about 22, and he went, a dangerous little fucker, you know, mm-hmm. didn't hit you in the face with a wall brick. Like that, you know, he yeah. said, oh, <laughs> he might not be the best fighter, but he's, 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 he used to say, my mum used to say, my dad, you can't fight him straight in the face of wall break and he, he had done that a few times allegedly. <laughs> and he was anyway, I'd already met I'd already heard about Tide Reputation, but I was only a kid at the time where when I met him the first time, but it was like twenty six the second time. And we went in the club and Lee Harrison said, United you stand, divided you just fall. And suddenly I went to jail. And I went to jail about five or six weeks later. Yeah. Obviously Lee was there then so I think you know just what there's a great it. song called that uh, called that you know uh, yeah. United We Stand Divided We Fall by Brother of the Man Have You Heard It? Yeah, really yeah. nice song, really nice song. Well, Lee Duffy wasn't this month, what people were saying, he had a good heart. I remember this story where he, <laughs> he'd had some um, allegedly ca- cannabis, and uh, he went to this shop, and it was a shop where you weighed your food. So people are weighing the food, you used to get food and weighed, you know, sugar and stuff. Lee went, get all the way, he pulled the kit bag off. He had these nine bars, weighing them into ounces in the shop. Then there's all 20 people in the shop stood there. And uh, he said, oh, I just weighed my stuff in there, maybe. I don't need any such and such. And he just walked in the shop. That was Lee. He was so unpredictable. And then yeah. he was dead loving. He, yeah. He'd give his coat away in the, the pool hall, which is another story the trolls didn't know about because they never went around, like you said. Mm. And we used to go there about breakfast, and there was a kid stood freezing. It was raining, and he went, Where's your coat, son? Well, I haven't got one. So Lee took his coat off and gave the kid his coat. It was hanging off him. But he gave him a coat. He took yeah, his coat yeah, off him. Yeah. I seen him do that about four times with his coat. Give his coat away. What's the, 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 the story, story where you've, you've got one of his coats? I had this coat, yeah. but I gave it to his daughter, which is Shelley, yeah, yeah, yeah. Carol's daughter. And yeah. uh, she said, I had a sense in it, I'd give her joy, but the troll tried to sell it for £500. Yes. And I said, no, no, I don't want to sell the coat. And I gave it rightly so where it should go back to the family. <clears throat> And um, me and my, my, my wife, you know, the, yeah, I've, I've, best I've, friends with Carol now. So the the thing we're chatting with these doing what they've done, of just put all these good people together. Yeah, together. And everyone yeah. started to realise well, what's going on. But Lee Duffy wasn't this person. What people write about in books, we've done the book, the, the, this one here, and it's probably the best book that's been written. I'm not trying to be big edits, the truest version, because that might have only been with Lee, a young for six months. We had a bit of a fight in March, and uh I was with him for about four months taxing people, but I actually knew that lad. I slept in the same house. 
we went to the raves together um we trained together we boxed on the pads um we went in Craig Howard and we were on the pad. We he said, Get a pads out. So I am because I said, No, used to like so Craig Howard got the pads. And he used to, Nikki was his girlfriend, she was a bodybuilder, remember that? Mm. Nikki Smith. Anyway, he got the pads out and, and he said, Craig, watch out fast because very excitable. Like, and he put me on the pads, Lee did it. And he went, Craig was on it, but he wasn't that good because he was trying to punch like he was benching 500 pounds. I did stiff. Yeah, fast. Yeah. And, and anyway, he said, Go on here, Brian. And anyway, I did the punch. He went, See, you can't be that big and be that fast. It's impossible. He defies mm. the laws of physics. Lee off his handwriting was brilliant. See his handwriting, you know, it, uh, yeah, uh, immaculate, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely immaculate. Mm. And uh, it was dead um, loving person to his mm. kids and that, you know, and his partner at the time, Carol, loved them, you know, and he. Um, he, he sadly missed out by everybody. So I yeah. tried to look Carol up on Facebook last week to message yeah. about it for some yeah. reason. Uh, Carol, you'll have to add you know, Kevin Kilty. Yeah. Yeah, because the other thing about it as well, when you told us the stories about that dickhead who was threatened her. Yeah, mm. yeah. And he actually did Absolutely. physically threaten her. Disgusting. Mm. Could you imagine oh. someone who's allegedly written a book about Lee Duffy? threatening his ex wife and mother of his kids? Yeah. yeah. Or any man. Well, you really threatened the kids as well. He, he's low the kids as well. Disgusting, wasn't it? I wish I had been there. And uh, we, when things get felt... sorted out, I've got lots of things to say to that low like cunt. Yeah. Yeah, horrible. Yeah. So, um, yeah, anyway, anyone have any questions, Emma? Because oh. next week I'm going to be asking yeah. Brian. What do you think questions. of Jen? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to ask him some big questions yeah. next so, week. So, Kevin, what do you think? Yeah, think? well. But now I've got to say Still a few more things to say next week, but uh, some questions that I want to ask Brian next week. And uh, sorry, I've had a bad throat tonight, yeah, so yeah. I couldn't talk as much as I wanted to. But next week, we can maybe have a good chat to Brian about these things. Uh, the week after, uh, probably in a different venue, <clears throat> I'm just going to tell a, a life yeah. story of what happened. Uh, <clears throat> He's trying to say this sorry. What happened with <laughs> get a drink? Let me get a drink. Go on, you talk, fella. What am I going to talk about? Yes, so don't Will forget you get to get the book and subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Brian Cockrell. Find that it's free. There's all sorts of there. It's not just these podcasts, there's trade of elastic bands for people with train. There's full training with the bodybuilding, the powder and the diets. There's how to help your teeth if you need to, if you've got bad teeth and how to get them for toothache, the gout, for all sorts of yeah, diets. I'm going to come on with some oh, yeah, Dr. 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 Yeah, Kilty's yeah, coming yeah. on. Uh, appointments, please. Uh, Something that might make prescriptions. you longer. Yeah, prescriptions put in, please, for uh, Mr. Kilty. For sore throats. <laughs> yeah, for sore throats. Yeah. No, a yeah. lot of good advice on medicines, yeah. what you can do. Even though I don't follow them, I can give you some excellent advice, really, really, really good advice and yeah. some truth. A lot to talk about, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. so we've got five minutes left, Kevin. Do you have anything yeah. else you want to say to anyone? Well, what I was going to ask everyone, does anyone know anything that's any good for sore throats? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking lockers. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I'm a dog, yeah. Dr. Yeah. Yeah. Guilty, no, asking just, questions uh, on my throat. Uh, I thought yeah. you talk about what you're going to do next week. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, throat. just so everyone know what we're going to do next week. I was going to try and do, uh, I ask Bri a lot about his life story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where I'm just literally to, talking to Bri. Yeah. 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 By then, his voice will be back with you. Your voice is it back. will be. Yeah. Gonna get but you no, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think questions that you want to be asked before. Well, that'll be good. Might be a lot next week. So, yeah. right, guys, thanks for listening to us. Uh, just like to say to everyone, have a great Easter. Don't eat too much chocolate, and we love you all. We'll see you same time next week. Uh, and God bless you all. Thank yeah, you very much night. for listening to us. Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. Have a great time. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, they enjoy, but I think a lot of people enjoy.